Mercy Jump Scare. Hi, everybody. It's been a while since we touched Danganronpa another. But now we're back. But first, we have some obligations. Uh, before we can get to uh, the game itself. <clears throat> and that is, obviously... Uh... Oh, hold up. Let me change the uh, chat color real quick. Obviously, we have to go over the free time events that we have not done yet for uh, the characters that died last. Hold up. Maybe that'll be good. Chat, reload. There we go. Works uh, better with black text on that background. I think. Anywho. But yes, uh, so here's the uh, itinerary. We're going to go through the free time events of the characters who died last time. And then once we're done with that, we will move on into starting chapter four. So let's get with it. Starting with Kakiru Yamaguchi. Let me turn up the volume. Can you guys hear that okay? Wait, desktop audio is not working. Why is desktop audio not working? Hold up. It, it isn't muted. Hmm. Can you mute and unmute it, maybe? Huh. I'm not, yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Peanut Kicks, for becoming a member. Huh. Strange. Strange and unusual. You can hear the video audio, but not loud. Okay. Uh, hold up. Let me check the uh, volume mixer real quick. Okay, yeah. Uh, Chrome is on 100. Strange. Uh, and the, the video itself is turned up all the way as well. Well, let me uh, use a volume master plug in then turn it up maybe. See if that helps. I think it's... That was the channel member, hell yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me play the audio real quick and you guys tell me if you can hear this. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is there. It's just really quiet now. I guess I just have to, like, turn it up a ton for some reason. But you, you guys can hear that, hopefully. Okay. There we go. We got it. We solved it. We solved the puzzle. We may have to readjust the audio in a minute, though, <laughs> after we get done with this. Anywho, <clears throat> let's get to it. Hey, Yuki. Dot, dot, dot. Huh? What's up, Kakeru? Is it fun to hang out with me? It, it ain't much fun, right? Not at all. You're actually reliable, and you make other people feel comfortable. Um, I'm more of an introvert. I lack social skills, so I'm bad at leading conversations. Felt that. I can't believe that a lawyer is saying that kind of stuff. No, uh, no. have you played Ace Attorney, Yuki? They're all, they're all like this. Can I ask why you're like this, despite being a lawyer? Why am I like this? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, please don't get angry. Sorry, I didn't mean any harm. Uh, I'm not getting angry. I, I just happen to look really pissed off all the time. All right then, to make myself clear, lawyers are supposed to speak for their clients before the court, right? That means you regularly, regularly have to speak in front of a crowd. 
I don't get it myself. When a court is in session, my confidence suddenly skyrockets and my expression and speech change. The little, like, ooh, everybody mean to me fingers. It feels as if I'm transforming into a completely different person. I see. It only happens in court. I do think about it from time to time, about how good it would be if I could speak properly and act confidently in my daily life, just like in court. Your persona in court is just another side of you. I'm sure you can will yourself to act as you wish to in daily life as well. Really? I'm not too sure if I can do it. Say, can you try imagining that your daily life is happening inside court? I mean, in a manner of speaking, it kind of is now. Think of every pedestrian as a jury. Every person you speak to as a prosecutor. I don't know if that's a, com a completely great idea. <laughs> nice ideas, but won't I become a workaholic from it? Yeah, I get it. I reckon you need to improve controlling your facial expressions first before learning to be more colloquial. What? My... Is my facial expression weird again? Ah, uh, you're right. That's another problem. Why am I riddled with so many problems? I am such a useless guy. That's not true. Belittling yourself will only make things worse. Stop getting hung over, over what others are saying and be more confident. I mean, that's easy to say, Yuki. Sorry, Yuki, but thanks to you, my eyes are open a little. Can you advise me again some other time? <laughs> Weak on what is life but an endless trial, true. A timid personality within a huge body made of muscles. I can't blame him for feeling a little insecure. However, one thing's for sure, Kakiru is definitely not a bad guy. I patted Kakiru's de-energized back a couple of times. After we said our goodbyes, I decided to move. Alright. Part 2. Um, Yuki, what kind of talent do you have again? Yeah, why are we listening to Yuki for advice, true? Huh? Did you say talent? <laughs> what did you just say to me? Uh, yeah. I'm the ultimate lawyer, right? So Yuki was the ultimate... Mm... Oh, I'm just the ultimate, uh, ultimate lucky student. I was literally picked by a lottery. It's not really an interesting talent, is it? So, you became good friends with everyone because of your luck? Huh? I don't think so. It lo looks like a lot of peop other people depend on you a lot, Yuki. Hey, no way! Most of them see me as an ordinary guy. Is that true? <laughs> also, I probably don't have that kind of ability. After all, I'm the ultimate lucky student, not the ultimate social guy! <laughs> And it's not as if my luck is all that great either. Being trapped in a place like this is unlucky more than anything. Ooh. Wow. Uh, real, uh, real clever there. That's strange. I was sure the girls treated you in a slightly different way than the others. Yeah, for some reason. I don't know why. Weren't, weren't you hanging out with Akane before? Yuki and Akane, both of you looked close to each other. Stay away! She has a wife! And there was one time Kizuna called you you in an intimate tone as well. Well, Kizuna is just a weirdo. What kind of tangent are we heading to? Is Kakiru mistakenly believing that I am busy flirting with girls or something? <laughs> yeah, that's all he does. All the time. It's not like that, Kakiru. It's just by chance that I'm with Akane often. And Kizuna does that to all the other guys, too. Well, speaking of which, are there any girls you're close with, Kakiru? I don't have any close friends here. Never mind girls. I don't think I have any guys I'm close to. Well, a sad bisexual. I feel that. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. There's no need to. I do envy you a lot, though, Yuki. Envy me? About what? I felt it strongly when we met last time, Yuki. I've been observing you closely ever since you started coming to talk to me. I could see that. I could see that you're cordial with other guys and that you treat girls kindly. I don't have your courage. 
maybe it's thanks to your luck, Yuki? It's not related to luck, and I told you already that not everyone is friendly with me. Do we call someone like you a master socializer? Stop twisting things, Kakiru. Please, it's nothing like that. Shut up! Stop complimenting me! Since I am a guy as well, I must be the one to initiate conversations with girls, even if it ends up being just one word. Hey, what's up? <laughs> no, wait. I should start with guys first. <laughs> that's, that's right! <laughs> I will make friends using my own strengths. Please, Yuki. I can see it happening as long as you continue hearing my concerns. Oh, Master Socializer, <laughs> I beg you for a huge favor. It, those are three words. Don't don't get pedantic with me. Socializing expert capable of speaking my way into lifelong friends at breakneck speed. I don't know about that, Yuki. Don't. It's it's a rather heavy expectation, but it doesn't feel too bad for now, anyway. But frankly speaking, I can see his request becoming tiresome sooner than later. Yet I sympathize with Kakiru a lot. And most of all, I can't refuse a request from someone with such an imposing figure that could easily snap me in two, though I know he never would. Don't be mean to him. Evading Kakiru's sense of admiration, we parted. Hey, Kakiru, I was wondering about something. Huh? What is it? You're a lawyer, right? What made you decide to build those huge muscles? Most lawyers aren't some super buff or anything, right? I don't know. There, there are some out there. When people think of lawyers, they usually imagine straight-A students who spend all their time studying. You know what I mean? Y nerds! Uh, I had personal circumstances. Uh, all right. If it isn't something you want to talk about, I'll drop it. Wow, you were you were quick to be like, well, I want to hear more about you. Uh, but no, never mind. Don't tell me about you at all. It's nothing serious. You listen to my concerns all the time anyway, so I don't mind if we talk about it. You see, my body isn't a product of exercise. I turned out this way by just growing up. What? Huh? Ever since I was a kid, I always found myself a head taller than those around me. Even though I didn't do anything special. He's just built different! <laughs> I ate, slept, and lived like a normal kid too. Frankly, I'm not even sure how my stature and muscular build came to be. Damn it, it would be great if Kakiru could spare some of his height to me. My short height hurts my soul, honestly! <laughs> My height was already over 180 centimeters when I was in elementary school. Holy shit! <laughs> no one believed me that I was a student around their age. I would get strange looks whenever I bought a student pass on the bus or in the cinema. <laughs> that sucks. That's so sad. Also, because of my intimidating look, people often mistook me for a gangster. Safe for height, there's nothing to envy about Kakiru's predicament. Kakiru certainly has an appearance completely opposite to what a high schooler should look like. That's why I started to avoid people. I started to study because I hated how people treated me so much. I, I thought that people would be nicer to someone who looks intelligent. Aww! I assume people avoided me because of my gangster-like resemblance. That, that was how I was driven to study. That I happened to attend a court session on a field. Then I happened to attend a court session on a field trip. There I witnessed a lawyer asserting himself in an eloquence like no other. The lawyer gave me an abrupt hope that I could one day be just like him. Aww. Which is why I began to study to become a lawyer. And surprisingly, it came rather easily to me because. It turned out that my oral skills became undefeatable inside the court, as if there were another person within me. That's a relief. At least you can speak well inside the court. However, I expected my social ineptitude to naturally go away once I became a lawyer, 
but it wasn't the case. Outside of the court, I was still an unsociable guy with a body unbecoming of my job, which is why no one believes that I'm a lawyer. Inside the court's just as bad. I get too pumped up that people get scared of me and try to run away. Oh, I feel so bad for him. Yuki, what should I do to socialize properly with my classmates? Is it possible that I'm, I'm just plain hopeless? I'm not sure what I can do to console him. Kakiru is amazing for becoming the ultimate lawyer just to overcome his complex, but his efforts haven't been fruitful. I feel for him a bit. As I patted Kakiru's slumped shoulders, I guided him to his room. <laughs> Let's get you to bed. Okay, last one, I guess. Um, Yuki, I've got something to say. Hmm? So, about, um... Oh no, I can't bring myself to do it here. Can we go somewhere else to talk? I'd prefer if it was just the two of us. Okay. Oh right, how about we go into my room? That should work. That's a surprise. You inviting someone to your room isn't something we get to see every day. Uh, so Yuki, please come by. Kakiru appears to be quite nervous. I wonder if something happened. I decided to visit Kakiru's room for the time being. Yeah, you've given him unnecessary feelings. <laughs> well, wow, thanks for coming by, Yuki. There was something I wanted to ask, but I might have been ridiculed if someone heard me. That's why I invited you to my room. I can't let anyone but you know about my questions. Alright, so what's keeping you up at night? It's an extension of our previous talk. Yuki, you're able to execute conversations flawlessly with our schoolmates. How, how do you manage to talk so competently in your daily life? Huh? How? I just talk. I don't use any particular tricks. Really? Wow, I envy your sociability. How you seamlessly mingle with other schoolmates. It's nothing special, Kakiru. You can do it too. Just treat others comfortably as friends. It's not easy to make proper friends when my face scares others away, not to mention my stuttering. I want to learn how to speak normally like you, Yugi. I don't want this awkward stuttering to bother me forever. So, Yuki, do you mind teaching me how I can start to be more sociable? I don't think I'm qualified. I really don't think too hard when I talk. Yeah, yeah, that's obvious, Yuki. Maybe if you were to introduce a routine to help your social skills? Actually, wait, I have an idea. Let's test it out. This is a court, and I'm your opposition, a prosecutor. If you act your daily life out in a legal battle, you might become an expert at speaking. Will that kind of practice work? It will make me feel borderline workaholic. But don't you want to fix your stuttering? It's well worth a go. If you can speak naturally without stuttering, it will become way easier to make friends. We'll never know the results, right? Both good and bad, if we never try it, right? Right. I agree. Now I'm gonna try. Yuki, help me out. Chant a spell out for me, so I, I can concentrate. A spell? Kakiru closed his eyes tightly. He looks really sincere. Kakiru thinks he needs my help to uproot his introverted nature. Kakiru, you are a lawyer. I am a prosecutor, and we are in court. <laughs> He's doing like hypnosis ASMR. <laughs> you are a lawyer. I am a prosecutor. We're in court. Hmm. Hmm. It's working. Just a little bit more. 
You're a lawyer. I'm a prosecutor. We're in court. You're a lawyer. I'm a prosecutor. We're in court. Ah! Shut your mouth! Yuki! Look at me! I am not stuttering! I can do it too! <laughs> <laughs> my ears, what the heck? Shut my... He's the one who asked for a spell in the first place. I managed to successfully drag his inner persona out, but this is too much of a transformation. His overwhelming energy was so strong I couldn't help but stagger backwards and trip over. Yo, grow up here, Yuki! Why the heck are you down on your ass? Stand up now! <laughs> Kakura grabbed my shoulders and began to shake them up and down. Stop it, stop it, I'm feeling dizzy. I might throw up. <laughs> yes, this is my court and I'm the lawyer. Yes, I am not a stutter dumbass anymore. Okay, come on, don't be so harsh on yourself. Uh, stuttering, like, is, is less of a, like... You know, people don't usually choose to stutter most of the time. Thanks to you, I've stopped stuttering! For that, you have my gratitude! Alright, I will talk to the other guys in my current form! I will prove to them it's possible to have normal conversations with me! Thanks, Yuki! You are, indeed, my best friend! Someone I trust the most! Uh, Kakiru, wait for me! Damn, he didn't even listen to me. Wherever he ran off to, there's definitely going to be trouble. How did he even suddenly turn from a stuttering introvert to a dramatically passionate jock? Is a change in mindset enough for such a turnabout? Maybe it's a case of dual person- Shut up, Yuki. <laughs> okay, I should compose myself. My head might be ringing, but it's great that Kakiru has found confidence. However, his current persona might be difficult for other reasons. <laughs> He said at the end that I'm his best friend and someone he trusts the most. Does this mean Kakiru treasures me as a friend? What do you think, Yuki? I feel a deep bond with Kakiru. I can sense that we became close from the bottom of my heart. It feels awkward to be in here alone. I have to get moving. <laughs> well, uh, that was that. So now, let's move on to Kanata Inori. Yay! Mr. Mina, may I ask if you're having chest pain or a dull ache anywhere else in your body? Huh? No, I think I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> rubber Jontron jump scare. I it I think it was like a video that's like oh the the downfall of normal boots or something like that. Um, <laughs> I I would hope it is not obvious that I do not watch this man and never will. That's a relief to hear. Physical health is often affected negatively when mental and emotional factors are at risk. In a closed and restricted environment like this, it's harder to stay healthy than usual. Please be careful, Mr. Maida. Oh, are you concerned for me? Thanks, you really are a doctor at heart. No problem, it's my duty as a physician. I want nothing more than to keep everyone here healthy. Except for me, when I die. I know she's a doctor, but caring for the health of people you hardly know about? That's admirable. Nowadays, some doctors are so absorbed in making profit that they neglect their duty. But just in case, Mr. Maida, let me tell you about a few life habits that will help you stay well. First, exercise your eyes often. Roll them 360 degrees clockwise and counterclockwise. And since the dinner offers a wide selection of dishes, it's important that you make healthy choices for your diet. Yeah, you turn your eyes 360 degrees? Try to cut down on sugars and sodium, food additives. Oh, wait, I appreciate your advice, but aren't you going on too much? Why don't you just shut up? <laughs> huh? Why are you stepping back, Mr. Mida? Come, you need to know these in order to stay in good shape. Only eat gruel with vitamins interspersed. I, I just saw your eyes twinkle. He, remember, health comes first. 
<laughs> Look at the back of your skull. It was a bit scary to see her being so eager to teach me about health. But I felt that she genuinely cares for her classmates. Okay. I managed to turn down Kanata's persistent offer of more health lessons. After taking a rain check, I parted with Kanata. Kanata, what do you do in your spare time? Oh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, something like enjoying a hobby at home or going on a road trip with friends. Yeah, uh, you know, for a hobby, I go out on a road trip every single time. Hmm, I'm in a hospital for most of the time. If I were to take a day off, I would be reading a medical journal or checking patient records. That's not taking a break at all. Aren't you just working all the time then? Oh, is that so, Mr. Maida? But I feel most content with myself while studying and taking care of my patients. It's her hyperfixation, you Wow, you care about your patients a lot. But don't cert certain temperamental patients rage at doctors for no reason sometimes? Do you ever get angered by them? <laughs> Do you look them dead in the eyes like House MD and tell them that if they don't listen to you, they're going to die a horrible death? You see, temperamental patients are often poor people experiencing the harshest illnesses. They just need someone to vent their frustration to. It's a very kind way to look at it. Very nice of her. So I don't get upset by them. I treat and listen to them as my patients, just like other patients. There were occasional dangerous moments, though. After all, the emergency room is usually reserved for those on the brink of death who need immediate treatment. Yeah, I would assume poor means like doing unwell, not having money, yeah. More than that, you meet a variety of people from different backgrounds there. The previous summer, there was an instance of Yakuza faction war. Oh, wow, okay. Hello. Will you, will you continue talking? Okay. Gentlemen from rival y Yakuza groups were brought into the ER, and attending doctors were almost wrapped up in the middle of a knife fight. <laughs> Okay. Just like imagine like Kanata like sliding over the desk like a like an action hero like grabbing the knife out of the guy's hand. <laughs> oh man, it must have been a scary moment. With any less luck, the emergency room w would become a sea of blood. Weren't you scared? I was scared, but I am a doctor. Kanata with, with the gun, like, I'm a healer, but I couldn't leave my patients untreated, regardless of who they are. Because the Yakuza gentlemen were moving intensely despite their wounds, they were endangering their lives. Which is why I... What did you do? I didn't want to do it, but I resorted to violence. Whoa, she did. She fought them. She fought them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. No, go on, please. Tell me more information. When I boinked the head of one boisterous Yakuza gentleman, everyone else became quiet. It sounded like this. Yeah, it sounded like quiet because you paused for so long. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> okay, should I like skip ahead? Yeah, yeah. Ow! Kana to boinked my head, but I didn't feel any real pain. It must be because of her small, cute hands? What is that description, Yuki? Her hands?
Huh? Was it painful, Mr. Mida? Not at all. Wait a sec, that was reckless. What if the Yakuza returned the favor and slapped your cheeks, Kanata? Phrasing, Yuki. Well, my patients were in genuine danger. Fortunately, they listened to my explanation and complied with my orders without complaining afterwards. Alright. Uh, I bet that after something like that happened, the Yakuza gangs were probably too dumbfounded to speak. Sorry if, like, the, the bar appearing is kind of distracting. It's just, it's like paused for so long. I'm like, alright, we gotta get a move on. Continue the line. Even so, you put, shouldn't put yourself in great danger for your patience. Kanata, you're a normal human being like everyone else. If you get hurt, it would be a bigger crisis. Could watch on 2x. Yeah, I, I just feel like it might go a little too fast then. In some parts, though. Mr. Maida, are you concerned about me? Thank you very much, but I wanted to fulfill my duty as a doctor. Since everyone was discharged from the hospital without complications, it was all worth it. Yeah, I could do 1.5, I guess. Kanata has such a kind heart. She's like an angel, but she's so selfless that she forgets to take care of herself. I guess it's a consequence of her selfless and professional nature. <laughs> Extremely fast soccer. After listening more- oh god, okay, maybe that's a little bit too- too fast. Let's put it on, uh, 2.5. Or 1.25. Mr. Maida, do you feel any fatigue from our predicament? I guess I am a bit tired. From the nerves, I suppose. Oh. There's a plane going over the house. Sorry if you can hear that. Being locked up in a stressful environment is making me nervous. It's mentally tiring. I mean, one would assume, yeah, I would, I would think so. Yeah, if we can at least go outside and feel the sun once in a while, it'll, it'd, help, it'd help us feel better. Father, please save me, like you did once. What? Hello? What? Having to kill other people and be distrustful of my friends. I cannot bear it anymore. Father? Did your father save you in the past, Kanata? Uh, yes, well... Mr. Maida, is there someone special who comes across your thoughts at times like these? For me, those people are my fam- Oh, for me, those people are my family members. But I definitely don't have my life savior or someone like that. <laughs> like the Holy Father? <laughs> I see. Kanata, is everything okay? You've been acting strangely today. Thinking about your dad is so weird. Uh, you see... I suppose it's okay to tell you, Mr. Maida. As a matter of fact, my father and I are not biologically related. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> Why is he so surprised by this? What? You're adopted! Oh my god! Kanata's not biologically related to her father? I haven't heard this before? <laughs> Yuki, what place do you live in? When I was younger, a big accident happened. It happened when my family was going on a trip. It robbed me of my family's lives and almost my own as well. Oh, damn. Okay. I was too injured to clearly recall what happened, however. Kanata, it must have been difficult for you. Man, that's sad. I'm so, so sorry. Barely breathing, I was transported to a hospital for an emergency surgery. Oh, so is that why she became, like, uh, interested in medical stuff? But upon witnessing my grave injuries, every single surgeon refused to take on a challenge that seemingly had little chance of success. That is, all but one. 
Uh, I see. I see where this is going. One surgeon who believed in that small chance volunteered to operate on me. Thanks to him, my life was saved. That's that surgeon was. Yeah, go ahead, say it. Yes, he is now my father. The surgeon sympathized with my loss and decided to adopt me. Very admirable, isn't it? As he was the savior of my life, my admiration for my father's benevolence grew day after day. Eventually, I decided to study medicine under his stead in hope of becoming a surgeon like him. Just like he didn't give up on me, I became a surgeon who would try her best to save another person. But now, I can't leave this school. If only my father were by my side, I think I would be able to hang on a little longer. It's getting difficult to do so. Damn. I can't save everyone from our predicament either. I'm of no help for anyone. I'm sorry, I'm not worthy of being a doctor. This is so sad, dude. Knowing what happens to her, too. That's like, ugh. Kanata, you're wrong. You're not of no help at all. Huh? You can definitely become someone like your father someday. God forbid someone gets hurt again, but if something like that happens, you'd save others without giving up, right? Kanata, you can be someone we can depend on. They can heal us, both physically and mentally. As long as you continue trying, I'm certain that you can get and become someone we can depend on when we get nervous. Just like who your father is to you. Sorry. Sorry, was I out of line? Mr. Maida, may I call for your attention? Huh? Why? I hope you think of me when you get ner- oh, come on. Why does it have to be, like, obligatorily romantic? Yuki? Huh? What do you- Smiling coyly, Kanata said her goodbyes and ran away quickly. What did she mean by it just then? Nevertheless, it's a relief that Kanata looks like she's feeling better than before. Left alone and awkward, I decided to move as well. Um, Yuki, are you free? Hmm? What's up, Kanata? Um, so, could you please come to my room for a moment? <laughs> Just doing the Palpatine thing. No, 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 no. Huh? What the? Such an abrupt invitation to her room. Is there something she wants to share with me in secrecy? I could never expect a Kanata to say something like this. Please come by, Yuki. Make sure to come alone and not bring anyone else along. She just, like, tries to kill him <laughs> as soon as he walks into the room. <laughs> I will get going and prepare the room before you visit me. I'm going to take your blood! K Kanata? Kanata ran towards her room with her cheeks flushing red. What's going on? What does she mean by preparing her room for me? Ah, here you are, Yuki. Oh, she literally does have blood packs in her room, too. But what's going on, Kanata? Why did you invite me to your room so suddenly? Yuki, I would like you to... Pl okay. What? Hello? Huh? What? My head has gone blank. Uh, huh? What? 
I mean, I know it's not gonna be that, but like... Such bold commands from Kanata of all people made me so dumbfounded that I didn't move. Well, to be precise, it's more that I couldn't move. Yeah, it's, it's probably gonna be like a checkup, I would assume. Your face is getting red. Are you feeling unwell? No, no, no. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Why does she have unrefrigerated blood packs? Anyone would get flustered when you're told to take off your clothes. Yeah, obviously. Ah, is that so? My apologies. I haven't told you why I called you to my room yet. Yeah, you might want to go ahead and do that. You're a dear friend of mine, and certainly someone who wouldn't ever murder someone. This is why I believed in you and asked you to visit my room alone. <laughs> really? Thanks, Kanata. In any case, I still can't figure out the correlation between what she has said and why I'm being told to lie on the bed. Wait a second, this feels like a scenario in certain mangas. Is something like that gonna happen to me? No, I shouldn't be expecting stupid things like that. Yeah, you should really not do that. Yuki, the reason I called you here... <sighs> My god, please. Just... Just say the words. It's to do a routine health checkup in my room. I really wanted to do this for you. Please lie down. Thank you. God. A routine checkup. What the heck did I expect? I'm so ashamed. How could I misinterpret Kanata's favor in that kind of way? I really am the worst. Yeah, you are. Shut up. Yuki, why are you in despair? Ah, it's nothing, Kanata. Ugh, uh, God, stop. Do I, do I need to take off all my clothes, though? No, just taking off your top half is fine. Just cutting off your entire torso is fine. I'm in capable hands. I lay down in the bed after taking off my clothes one by one and folding them nicely. I'm sorry, Kanata, for misunderstanding your intention. You never meant something like that. Sorry. Anyways, the fact that I'm lying on the bed, Kanata sleeps in every day makes me quite nervous. Why? Uh, okay. Y you know, just, I... Right now, I am bringing out the hammers to throw at this man. Kanata's eyes excitedly scan my body as I lay still. She then used a stethoscope to listen to my chest, followed by pressing various parts of my body. She ended the checkup by measuring my blood pressure. I wonder where she got all the tools from. Um, well, she's a doctor. <laughs> there isn't anything wrong with your body. I wish there were machines or instruments for more precise tests, though. But Yuki, it seems like you haven't exercised much. Your muscles aren't that developed. She's literally like, I'm gonna do you a favor and give you a routine health checkup. Wow, you're weak as shit! <laughs> I recommend you find your way find ways to exercise. Furthermore, your body is stiff from excess stress. Please do light stretches to relax and alleviate your fatigue. <laughs> uh, if there isn't anything obviously wrong, my body's okay, I guess. This is getting a bit, um... Yeah, you're pathetic, man. It sucks. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell myself to stop. <laughs> no, no need to see sorry. say sorry. You did it because you cared about my health. What made you suddenly do a health checkup, though? Yuki, I was unable to revive our deceased classmate. Okay, whoa, getting serious here for a second. I was unable to save those who were pressured to murder by their own burdens. I couldn't do anything for them despite being a surgeon. Then you helped me come to a realization last time we talked, that my thoughts alone can help. Which is why I want to devote myself to treating everyone who's still with me. This is why I started health checkups with the person I'm closest to, to you, Yuki, because I am a surgeon, you see. I guess there was a, a typo there that got corrected. Me? I think I can help everyone with my knowledge. If I can let everyone know... Oh, okay, what? Hold on, go back. Uh, if I can let everyone know how I feel about my patients, then maybe the murders will stop. Okay. Well, no. Perhaps by doing routine health checkups and counseling other classmates' emotional distress, anxiety, and fatigue, I could heal them from their burdens. That's my thought. Until I die, that is, yeah. So, Yuki, do you feel better now? To be honest, it was a health checkup out of left field. However, Kanata has resolved to do this for the sake of me and the others. Her considerate thoughts are a relief. A relief from Monokuma's omnipresent despair. I felt like I can endure despair just a little bit longer. 
Thanks, Kanata. I feel much better. You really are an angel. You're embarrassing me, Yuki. I'm a demon, actually. All right, I will start to do routine checkups for everyone from today. If you don't mind, could you please help me out a little, Yuki? There was no reason to say no. I promised to Kanata that I'd help her whenever I can with a pinky promise, which is exactly why I let her die, painfully. <laughs> Kanata has managed to mature into an even better person here. Kanata, of now, who has devoted herself in care of all of us, shone before me like an angel. I have no doubt that she will become a doctor equal to her father someday. Oh, yo, that's right. Jack Starrett uh, pointed out an angel killed by the priest. Oh, man. After saying our farewells, I exit. Okay, yeah. All right, and last but not least, said priest. Let's go. Uh, well, let me pause. Hey, Nesby, I wish I could donate, but funds are a little tight at the moment. Just want to say thank you. Your videos help me out with living on my own and make that feeling much more bearable. Hey, thank you so much. I'm glad that I could help. Uh, don't worry about it at all. I'm just glad that I can provide entertainment uh, for people. With our differences in faith in mind, I must thank you for allowing me the time to conclude my sermon. Oh, okay. Uh... I guess I should turn up the speed in a second. Now, I believe you had some sort of important business? Huh? No, not really. I guess I just wanted to have a friendly talk with you. Uh, as a, as a classmate? I'm grateful for your enthusiasm, but I would rather not waste time with frivolous activities. To state my genuine thought, I would prefer that you use this time for the investigation and not something of less importance. Wow, okay. It is an absolute priority for us to escape this place, is it not? Escaping here is important, but I don't think that makes hanging out with someone meaningless. Even if we're stuck here, we're still classmates. With the power of friendship, we have nothing to fear. Literally state the trope. Yes, I feel the confidence in your reply. Indeed, that may be the solution to our present situation. However, no answer is always correct. The right answer can be anything you believe to be true. Completely random, but congratulations on 69,000 subscribers. Thanks, it was nice. I've never concerned myself with my relationships with others or day-to-day -day life. Okay? Therefore, I cannot side with your thoughts completely. Moreover, a personal attachment to someone might jeopardize my devotion to faith. For me, that is a serious problem. Whoa? I see, he is the ultimate priest after all. But Kinji is too strict. He might seem like a man of few words, but he's actually quite chatty. Couldn't there be a way for us to get closer? You're gonna sway him out of his faith, Yuki! <laughs> is there anything else you wish to tell me? Well, what about you? What's your story, Kinji? My own story? I doubt it would be entertaining. It's all right, I just want to know more about you. Then let us do it later, when we have time. I have not had this kind of conversation before, so I must sort out the words in my head. Is that really necessary? You don't have to prepare or anything. Come on, we're friends. No, allow me some time. Worry not, I never lie. Nope, never. I made a promise. I will keep my word. Let us talk again when the time is right. I want to hear it now, but I guess I don't have any other choice. He said he would keep the promise, so I'll let him take his time. Meanwhile, I felt like I became a bit closer to Kenji today. Did you? He spent the whole time being like, uh, leave me alone. Do not talk to me. Heretic, you will sway me from the path of God. <laughs> Yuki, do you have time? Oh, so you're the one- come crawling back! <laughs> Huh? Yeah, I'm pretty much free. <laughs> You've ruined me. <laughs> you prodded me once, and now my life is over. <laughs> Good. Then let us have a talk. Uh, is there something wrong? I promised last time I would tell you my personal story. You mentioned something about the power of friendship, so I told you to give me some time. Oh, right, we did. I thought you forgot.
You need not worry. I do not easily forget things. Then, where should I begin? Kinji starts to, intends to start everything with formality like this. It's somewhat awkward, but he remembered and tried to keep the promise with me. I can feel how sincere he is. Right. I shall te tell you about the time I became a priest. Oh, I'd like to hear that. I mean, how you became the ultimate priest. Around the time I graduated from my seminary and began serving the church as a deacon, I was in Italy. By then, I had already spent a considerable portion of my life in Italy. That includes my childhood as well. He's Italian?! <laughs> then are you Italian or half Italian? Not quite. I was born Japanese, but adopted by my Italian father. I knew something about him felt a bit foreign, but I never would have guessed this. <laughs> Wahoo! Yippee! <laughs> Uehara is my birth mother's surname. <laughs> my father was a well-respected bishop in his younger years. <laughs> he was adopted? What? <laughs> That's so crazy! <laughs> Who does that? Although he chose to live a secular life later on, his... Uh, hold on, let me go back. His reputation from his former office was fundamental to my entering the priesthood. Even before I came of age, I graduated from the seminary to become the youngest priest in my class. When I reached middle school age, I was baptized by my father and immigrated to Japan by myself. To preach in a church in Tokyo. By yourself? Then your father is still in Italy? I talk to him on the phone sometimes, but I've not seen him face to face for more than three years. Are you okay with that? I already miss my parents after being stuck at this place for a few days. Oh, hold up. $25 from Wecon. Got you covered, Guardian Alita. Thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate it. I'm not sure I understand exactly what you meant by the... Oh, oh, right, 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 right. The, the per... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. I'm sorry, I totally blank on names. As long as he's alive, I can see him any time. Even if he's on the other side of the world. However, as long as it... Long as it may take, you'll be able to meet anyone as long as that person is alive. That's right. I can meet them as long as they're alive. <laughs> Which is what you will stay forever. Definitely. After I arrived in Japan, I dedicated my time to preaching. God is fair and just to everyone. Uh, okay. Criminals, Yakuza, even drug addicts. He has the power to save anyone who has fallen to evil. But aren't those people dangerous? <laughs> Yuki, they are not dangerous. <laughs> they too are human, no different from us. The real danger would be in act of locking them up in our prejudice. Yo, what? Prison abolitionist Kinji faced? After all, people can change. One of the pastors from my church once damaged his own life with alcohol and smoking. Now he works daily to preach the gospel to people like him. Wow, that's incredible, Kinji. Your word saved that person. The honor is not mine. All I did was show him a new path. I do not force my faith onto others. Oh, did I not tell you during the introduction? I do not force my faith onto others. It is a path they chose by themselves. Follow the path you believe is right. That is my idea of propagation and a personal motto of mine. Interesting. When I'm talking with Kinji, it really feels like my heart is being purified and relaxed. I can see how he is able to become the ultimate priest. Yuki becomes Catholic? But still, it's amazing, Kinji. I believe presenting them the path is the way of expressing your faith. Is it? The, there's a saying my father told me once. Your words can change the world. Since the day I heard it, I have always pursued that ideal. One day, I hope to change the world. With my words. I wonder if he's really the same age as me. Yeah, so he lied about not having, knowing how to use a phone, I guess. I could see how he was looking beyond to the ideal he hasn't reached yet. So much time has passed. Oh, so much time has passed. My story. It held little value as entertainment. I hope the tedium was not too bothersome. Not at all. I already feel like a new person just by talking with you. If you don't mind, can we talk more about religion next time? If you're okay with conversations like this, I will gladly do so. For now, though, farewell. Kinji. He truly is amazing. His dream might not be impossible. If we manage to get out of this place, someday he might he might really change the world with his words. 
I parted with Kenji after a quick goodbye. Yuki, do you have a minute? For our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Huh? Oh, what's up, Kenji? I want to talk to you, somewhere quiet. To me? Where should I... Ah, I know of a good place. Let us go to my room. Huh? Your room? Why are you startled? If you dislike my suggestion, your room should be fine as well. Oh, it was nothing. We can go to your room. I'm kind of curious about what your room looks like, too. Excellent. I shall open the door when you come. See you later. Inviting people to his room on the spot, that's not what Kinji would normally do. But still, he'll be waiting, so I should go, right? God, giant cross! Welcome. This place will provide us the environment to have a quiet talk. Uh, yeah, so what were you going to... Yuki, we have an abundant number of conversations since... We have had an abundant number of conversations since being imprisoned in this place. Have you? Like two? <laughs> yes, we did. Is our relationship already good to be called a friendship? Oh, of course we're friends. Actually, I've considered you a friend since the introduction. Yuki, I shall be frank. I did not call you to my room for another talk. Rather, I want to offer you a baptism! <laughs> oh my god, he's actually becoming Catholic! Well, I've heard of it before, but what exactly is it? The answer to that question would depend on which denomination of Christianity you were asking. According to Catholic teaching, however, Baptism is the rite of sprinkling or immersion in water as a means of purification from one's original sin and an acquisition of salvation. But regardless of such definitions, I would like to baptize you to symbolize my formal acceptance of you as my friend. <laughs> that is why I invited you. <laughs> formal acceptance as a friend. Friendship is nothing like a certificate. If you want to accept me as a friend, just think that I'm your friend. I do understand it by heart, yet. Yeah. I will not be content if I do not do this. <laughs> Yuki, please allow me to do so. I baptize you in the name of the Umfi, <laughs> the Mutual, and the Holy Pal. <laughs> Considering his inflexible nature, hold on. Uh, refusing this might negatively affect our relations, but this means Kenji wants to trust me, so I'll accept it. All right, Kenji, how does this work? A formal baptism requires multiple steps, however, I believe that there is no precedent of baptism as a friendship. <laughs> Thus, we shall proceed with the informal procedure. With the power of God, we shall be friends! <laughs> it might be a little uncomfortable, but I'm going to sprinkle some holy water on your head. Please stay still while I do so. Yeah, I can do that. Wait, is this school had holy water? No, this is tap water. <laughs> This is maybe one of my favorite free time events so far. It's all right. The setting does not require formality. What matters is the spiritual. <laughs> He's kind of beating around the bush. Wasn't he the ultimate priest? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. In the name of the Holy Cross, I, Kenji Uehara, solemnly swear to be bound by an everlasting friendship with Yuki Maeda. Under the grace of the generous Lord, amen! <laughs> like, dunks his head in the water. As I closed my eyes and listened to Kinji's touching voice, I felt- felt what? Felt slightly wet sensation running across my head. The tra water traveled along my hair and wet my shoulder, but I didn't really mind. Everlasting. That is what he definitely said. <laughs> Literally, are they getting married? Right, Kinji has accepted my existence deeply into his heart. Sorry for wetting your clothes. I am not quite a flexible person. No, I know I just said considering me your friend was enough, but I felt like the added formality strengthened the bond even more. I'm glad to hear that. Although this is a tad embarrassing to say, I'm truly grateful. My first friend. First friend? As I mentioned before, I chose to undergo training to become a priest at a fairly young age. Oh my god! While I was satisfied by my decision, I had to grow up surrounded by adults or the elderly, straying far from the average life of my peers. I believe that has shaped my personality to be somewhat less sociable, and I had no plans to engage in socializing at Hope's Peak, either. However, Yuki, you are different from other classmates in some way. 
I felt like I could be friends with you. Kinji. Thank you, Yugi. Lastly, please brace yourself as this might not sound like me at all. I hope that our friendship will last for all eternity. Oh, buddy, I'm actually getting sad about this. Same here. When I met him first, he seemed like a stony person who would be hard to approach, but he wasn't. He was just bearing the solitude and was the same as the rest of us deep down. Right now, I can feel Kinji's trust more than anyone else. Despite the despairing situation we're in, I was able to feel the full strength of our bond, a sensation that I've never had before coming to this school. I feel a deep bond with Kenji. I can sense that we became close. What? Uh... Sense that we became close... From the bottom of our heart. Dude. Dude, this hurts. This hurts. Uh... Uh... Okay. Anywho. Okay. Okay, so, uh, everyone's FTEs should be done pre-chapter six. Chapter six is, like, way worse if you don't have the context of everyone's FTEs. Uh, then, yeah, I guess by whenever we finish chapter five, then we can, like, do the remainder of them beforehand. <clears throat> But anywho, uh, da, 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 da. let's get to the game. Pull it up. There we go. Uh, let's turn down the sound. <laughs> Hopefully that should be okay. Uh, you guys tell me if the, the volume is either like too loud or too quiet. Cthulhu, the two dollars. Canadian two dollars. Emotional damage. I'm feeling it. Sincerely. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to hurt you guys' ears. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's, uh, it's a little bit loud, but... Mm -hmm. Put it at that. Okay. Anywho. Let's get back to it. Uh, it took us literally an hour to get through all of those free time events, so. Despair is, in essence, like a plague. When a person begins to despair, the person next to them begins to despair. And then the person next to that one also begins to despair. And the person next to that one also begins to despair. It starts to grow exponentially. No, rather, it's worse than a plague. There's no way to cure it. No vaccine, no solution, because it's despair itself. What? Hope? Are you joking around? Despair cannot be cured with something like that. If something insignificant as hope cures despair, this situation right now, how would you describe this situation? Can you answer it? Hope is nothing more than a fragment of despair, because despair is hope, but you don't know that yet. You... You don't feel worth talking to anymore. I'm done. Let's stop this now. Forget everything and... Make me despair. Ah! <sighs> Seems I had a nightmare. I don't remember the contents of my dream well, but my whole body was full of cold sweat and the blanket was on the ground. Uh, damn it. Maybe it's because of having a nightmare, but the mood w that wasn't good originally got worse. The reason I'm not feeling well is, of course, because there was a class trial just yesterday. As of yesterday, Inori and Yamaguchi were killed by someone, and a class trial was held to discover the culprit. 
And shockingly, the killer was Uehara, who I never imagined would commit murder. Uehara was the traitor, and was threatened by the lives of the children of the church who were held hostage. As a result, he was forced to commit murder. But despite Uehara's efforts, the children had already died long a long time ago. Monokuma didn't keep his promise. Eventually, Uehara did not know what purpose there was for killing two friends, and the man who suffered a terrible execution passed away. Damn it! It's obvious, but I haven't been feeling well since then. Naturally, it's because my friend who was, mur was murdered after being deceived by Monokuma. He died without even receiving the minimum compensation for him. It would be weird to be fine with the situation. As it proves, it isn't just me who feels that way. Escape? <laughs> you guys, did you really come down here hoping for a way out? Too bad. Sorry, there's no such thing. I'm not dumb enough to leave a way out. There's no other way than to kill, so let's give up on that idea. <laughs> we, who saw that Monokuma stopped by accident, were able to descend the secret stairs under the warehouse so as not to miss the opportunity we hardly ever obtained. The only thing inside was a dead end, a solitary jail cell. There was no way out. Even Monokuma was revived again and brought us despair. Soon after that, Kurokawa fell on her head. He had to support her and take her to the private dorms. We couldn't say anything else. Because we didn't feel, feel to say anything else, eventually, our relationships got worse, when it got worse. But it wasn't getting better, and begging was the same and unchanged. There, even I, who vaguely thought that I would have to work hard with everyone, felt like I had reached a limit. Is there really... Can we get out of here alive? The secret staircase, which was the only hope, was actually nothing. The brutality Monokuma to, to Uehara was a feeling that pushed us further. When I lay alone and thought with several negative thoughts even after waking up, the doorbell rang. Someone's calling. Who is it? Oh, Maida? Did I wake you up? Can I talk to you for a minute? It's time. Come in. I I'm sorry for suddenly calling you. It seemed to be late for Maida-kun, so I came to see you. Late for me? Yeah, did you oversleep? Everyone's already in the dining room. Hearing that, I looked at the clock in the private room. It's already past 7.30 now. It seems I didn't notice the morning announcement because of the nightmare. Sorry, it's no big deal. I'm just not in a good shape. Right. Will Maida come to the calling? If it's too hard, you can rest easy. I was calling? Oh, I would, wait, what? I think they got the, 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 the character name wrong there for a second. Mikiko-chan says she's going to rest in her room because she got sick today. Maybe because of yesterday, Teruya-kun and Haru-kun said they would sleep more today. It's the first time I've seen more than one or two people being absent so far, unless it was an emergency situation such as murder. In the end, yesterday's revelation bothered everyone. It's alright. I'm okay, because I just overslept. I'll be there in a moment. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are talking about over there. Thank you for your concern. Right, no big deal. Then I'll be waiting at the dining room. Uh, Piku, what point in the game are we? I just joined. Uh, beginning of chapter four. We just started it because we had to do the free time events that we missed from last time before moving ahead. I said it. I told Tyra that, but somehow I don't feel motivated. Somewhere in my mind, I thought if I just keep giving up everything, will if I keep giving up, everything will end just end right here. I feel like a weak heart trying to stand up. Um, Yugi, hearts don't stand up. They don't have legs. Idiot. It's not like the time to be weak. I have to force myself to do to do something. Excuse me. Tyra also had a hard time to be happy, but even so, she tries to bring comfort to her friends. That's also Tyra's own effort. 
I can't give up on myself and just say I don't know. Let's go to the dining room. That's depression. That sure is. All right, let's, wait, wrong place. Sorry, it was further. I remember things. There we go. Hello. Medican, you here? Hello to you, Yuki. Hello, Satsuki, I love you. I'm so glad to see you again. In the dining room, Taira and Iranami are having breakfast. There was a look of beauty in the room, but soon I realized a strange fact. This is... is this everyone? Is this everyone? What do you mean? It's almost time for breakfast. Are there only three of us? Looks like it. Yuki came late and I was having a date with Akane alone. Oh wow, okay, she moved on pretty fast. <laughs> she got a new girlfriend. I see. Well, I mentioned it before. Everyone seems to be resting today. I'm not asking because it's obvious. At first, I've seen the dining room with more than ten people. M Mitakun? I couldn't figure out even why I, s why I said what I've just told them. When I realized it, I was already screaming and I regretted it. Sorry for screaming at you. I don't mind. More than that, sit down. Come on, let's have a meal. I didn't know myself why I screamed suddenly. It was like my chest was throbbing. I felt an unbearable anxiety and I was getting sick of it. Originally, there should be Kurakawa, Haru, and Teruya in this place, but including them, there would only be six people. Of course, there's also Kinjo and Mikaru who are acting alone. However, even considering that, it's eight people. The numbers have been reduced to a single digit, and it put even more pressure on me than expected, and I couldn't stand it because I was anxious. Hey, I'm really sorry. I wasn't angry at you guys. It's okay, because we understand it. We too. Tyra couldn't talk any further. Tyra quickly understood what I was saying. It's not just me. Everyone understands the fact that there's only eight people left. Is it because there are only three of us here, or because of the anxious and awkward mood? Afterwards, there was no more talk, other than the sound of the dishes in the dining room we were silent. It's very quiet. Oh, maybe because there's three of us not here. Is that the case? Actually, there's five people. Kinjo and Mikaru. Is that so? I guess that's right. Again, stillness. Even Taira and Ir Iranami, who are the ones who bring the brightest mood among us, are, but among us? are here. But I'm, not the, I'm the only one who listens to them. No matter how much they try to make the mood more noisy, the number of people is just not enough. I also tried to say something, but I couldn't think of anything to say, and I wasn't feeling motivated. Since yesterday, it seemed that our situation was only getting worse and worse. Staying like this is something I hate. There's no Kobazine to take my jokes. Would it be better to forcefully call them? Oh, fucking Kinjo, alright. Kinjo? What? Nothing, I just wonder what's wrong. What's going on? that I came here to eat. What, what is that plane sound? Oh my god. It's, it's pet. Okay. I, 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 I think it's gone. But, all right. Um, anyway. <laughs> Kinjo said that and went to start eating silently. It may be tiring, but it looks like something seems wrong. Hey, Kinjo. What? What Uehara did. I mean... I don't want to put the name of a serial killer's name in my mouth. So that's what you think. After hearing what Uehara told him yesterday, I wondered if his thoughts changed a little. If you have nothing else to say, then eat quietly your rice. <laughs> then eat quietly your rice! <laughs> even though Kinjo came in, the mood did not change. No, rather, an even more awkward atmosphere was forming even harder. It's like representing us being driven to the edge off of a cliff. Thank you for the food. Are you already done? Yes, I just don't have that much appetite right now. Hey, Ginjo-kun. Tyra. That... I... this... Dessert! Would you like to eat some? This... it's nice when you don't feel good. I could make you some. What's the catch? 
<laughs> What's the, the, like the instant, like, why are you going to poison me? Do you want my natal chart so you can destroy me? Huh? Do you even realize your position? You attempted murder. You're an actual criminal with having a record of stabbing people. Did you think my thoughts changed because you couldn't even talk for a few days? I told you, you're not off the hook. Now you're trying to be close to me? You disgust me. God, shut up, dude. This- you suck so bad. Kinjo, you're talking too much. I still treat you as a preliminary criminal, and I've decided to pay attention to whether you're going to become a killer or not, but it's better to keep away from you. This is a place where you don't know your life will perish. In such a situation, you're with such an ex-criminal, the day will come sooner or later when you will face the knife on the back of the head. What? What? What do you mean by that? I'm sorry. I know I've committed a crime. But even so, I have a duty to live. Ayame-chan exchanged my life for hers. I can't just die in vain. Then go ahead and survive on your own. I don't have anything to say to a criminal who keeps talking to me as thinking that- uh, thinking we can be close friends. I'm doing this in order to survive together and escape. To avoid any more victims. I'm going to do the same for everyone here. So they can- that everyone can see the real me and be motivated again. Even if one person is suffering, we will not be able to escape together. We have to cheer up everyone as much as possible and be able to get out from here. That's my duty for Ayame-chan's sacrifice. Tyra. Tyra is too strong after all. Unlike me, who tried to escape from reality by excusing from my lack of will with excuses such as a decrease in the number of people and not feeling motivated, she was trying to move forward by doing what she could. If that's the case, don't show your face to me ever again. I feel motivated enough when I don't see you. No, I'll do whatever I can, Kenjo-kun. Until everyone, until you forgive me for what I did. Whether or not that happens. I think you already know, but I'll let you know this just in case. The fourth floor of the school is already open. If you want to get out of this horrendous place, then make some effort in your research. That was a good speech. Good job, Tyra. Good job standing up to him. Also, uh, yeah, uh, Slice Ninja, not gonna lie, when a character makes a speech like that, they die, so... I disagree. I'm going to, I'm gonna put a bet out there. I... I think... I think Akane's gonna make it. I think she's gonna make it to the end of this. That's just my, that's pr my preliminary feeling. That's my emotional feeling at the moment. I think she's, uh, I think she's gonna be a survivor. That's my prediction. <clears throat> uh, now, here's my other bet, though. Uh, Satsuki, my, my dear beloved clown girl, I've been thinking, I've been doing some thinking about it, and as much as I would love for her to survive, I don't think she's going to. Uh, and my explanation for that is this. We're at officially, like, a, like the halfway part, point of the story. Um, I feel like it is only logical given that, I mean, this is a Danganronpa game, um, you know, things are definitely gonna get darker as they go on. That's, that's just usually how it goes. Um, Satsuki is a very comedic character. Uh, I don't think the comedic characters usually end up making it all the way. Comic relief characters usually die. Um, for those of you who have obviously played the canon games, uh, SDR 2 Chapter 3 uh, was when we uh, lost Ibuki, who was a similar character in disposition, so that's just kind of my thought on it right now. But anyway, there's, there's a couple of predictions for you. That's all I've got. <clears throat> Tyra, wouldn't it be better to not get involved with Kinjo? He's the kind of person that treats innocents as criminals. I mean, Yuki, you should you should take your own advice, please. I don't believe that at all. I believe Kinjo will recognize our hearts someday. So what does Maitakun mean by that? If you were the Maitakun I know, you'd rather try to get closer to Kinjo. Uh, when I heard that, I was surprised of myself. Tyra was right. That would be the right attitude to get out of here. Was this because there's a side of me that hesitates about staying with Kinjo and everyone in my heart? 
my selfish side wanting to give up in despair because I can't see any hope. Hey, Kinjo said the fourth floor was open, right? How about we investigate from there first? Oh, uh, yes, okay. But what about the others who are resting in their rooms right now? Wouldn't it be the time we do the investigations first and then again tomorrow? Okay then, let's do our own investigation and see each other at the dining room after a bit. We'll make a report on the investigation. Hmm, today Maitakun seems somewhat weird. Weird? I don't know yet, but it doesn't feel like Maida at all. At Tyra's words, I couldn't answer anything. Our number at the beginning was 15 at first, and it descended to 8 in the blink of an eye. The secret stairway, I thought, it was a, I thought it was a clue to escape from here, in the end was useless, but I didn't have the courage to even kill to get out of here, and somehow I don't think we'll find a different clue, even if the new fourth floor is open. The, mom the moment all hope was gone, I could no longer treat the others as usual. Tyra's working hard like this, but a guy like me makes things hard like that? I only just went and said it would be better not to get involved with Kinjo. Damn it. Even if I understood it from my head, my heart didn't follow. Only constant anxiety remained in my soul. I tried desperately to ignore this and decided to devote myself to investigate the fourth floor. All right, let's get looking then. Oh, wait, that's the trial room. Let's go up the stairs, please. Yeah, I do think Kinjo is probably changing a little bit because of that whole uh, thing with uh, what Uehara told him at the end of the trial, but I still think he's slow on the uptake at the moment. Like, he's still going to be arguing for a while. Maitakun, isn't this floor a little weird? Weird? I looked around for a while, and besides the classrooms, the bathrooms, the school's office, there seems to be a director's office, a ballroom hall, and a teacher's office. But the classrooms and teacher's offices are all locked in the back. That's true. There were a few times when a new place that was locked up until now, even in the newly opened place, e yeah. but this is the first time that most of the floor has been locked up like this. That's why it all makes sense to look into it and in investigating together. I haven't been to the school's office yet. About a clue to escape. You haven't found anything else, have you? Maitakun? There was nothing on the second and third floors, where there were so many classrooms. Even most of the classrooms are locked here. It's obvious that there isn't any hope, is there? Maitakun, why are you saying that? Maitakun, you heard this before. It will be difficult, but let's try harder. We might find something, is what they said. I was just saying my thoughts. Of course we have to work harder. Maitakun, are you sure you feel well? Wouldn't it be better to rest in your room? Today Maitakun has been so strange. As Tyra said that, she was looking at me dreadfully. Am I weird? <laughs> Am I weird? Rather, the situation where all hope is not seen is, is not seen, is it not strange? It's not like that. I'm going to continue investigating. Let's see. There's a Korean, which means it's definitely very important since it's untranslated. Uh, yeah, nothing here. Okay. Nothing in the trash can, sure. This place seems to be locked, so I can't enter it. Information processing room. This looks like a very important place. That has to be like the the like mastermind room equivalent, right? Like the one that uh, Junko had in DR1. I would have to imagine. This place is locked and cannot be entered. Okay, just regular. Oh, hey, Kinjo. Oh, Kinjo, you're investigating here. Kinjo? What's going on? Somehow it looks like 
You don't seem in a good mood today. When is he ever in a good mood? <laughs> yeah, the data center. That mood is the same as you feel, doesn't it, Mida? Yeah. Kinjo is right. Since the class trial ended yesterday, my mood has been running at its worst. With no hope, such a horrible feeling. Well, there's nothing we can do. It happened yesterday. Who would be in a mood for this? I think the reason we're, why we're not feeling good between me and Kinjo are different. At least, you, do, you didn't mind Uehara being executed in despair after being tricked by Monokuma, right? <laughs> no, I'm completely- I'm a completely known character, am I? Kinjo? Yeah, it's just as you said. For no matter the reason- for no matter the reason, there's no room for sympathy to a killer. At the end of the day, it must be this way. Hey, Maida. Am I... wrong? Oh, he's having his moment! He's having his come-to-Jesus moment! <laughs> huh? Since before I even came to this school, I lived with the belief that my thoughts were moving towards the future. I made many unfair and painful choices in order to protect everyone. However, was I wrong? According to Kinji Uehara, he was doing the same as me. Why are you suddenly... Kinjo? I was surprised for a moment by the sudden change in Kinjo's mind, but sooner or later, the reason, I could understand, why Kinjo wasn't feeling well. Strange, Kinjo. My logic shouldn't be any different from yours, though, but you're heated up. Discard prime numbers for the majority. Isn't that what you said? I sacrificed 15 of our lives here, and prioritized the lives of nearly 100 children in the church. Of course, that doesn't mean it's acceptable to commit a murder. But Kinjo, you too, exposed Mekaru, Tomori, and me in danger when you were saying the same thing as well. Wouldn't it be necessary to reconsider your thoughts at least once, Kinjo? I've been trying to change things, turn them around, even childish things, but in the end, seven people have already left this world. I couldn't protect anyone. Eventually. It also means I did nothing to prevent it. I became a murderer too. Yes! Oh my god! He's having a moment! Kinjo, why am I talking about this? To you, who might become a criminal. Kin... Unexpectedly, I thought I should say something to Kinjo, who showed weakness for the first time. But my mouth didn't move. I tried to say something. What should I say? You don't have to feel responsible alone. Let's all work hard together. It's not too late anymore, so let's stop doubting each other and investigate together. The words were already organized in my head, but my mouth wouldn't would not obey. Everyone worked hard together. So what's the issue? There's already no hope, so how do we work together? With such despairing thoughts ahead wandering, Kinjo in front of me, in the end I couldn't say anything and I just lowered my head. Fine. Let's forget about this. I... I'll just solidify my own convictions like always. Maida, you're not sure either, or are you? Everyone doesn't know when a murder will happen. There's no exception for it. If you want to be hostile with the others like me, do it. I'll probably be hostile. I'm not sure how to treat you yet. It's better that you draw a line. I'd like that instead. I should have said something. What the hell is wrong with me? Ah, He was so close to having it! The seeds are planted, though. I, I, I see that something is happening inside of Kinjo at the moment. Maybe he will change. Oh, hey. Speaking of somebody who is also <laughs> very harsh a lot of the time. Ah, uh, Mikaru, you came to investigate, too. Incompetent. Talk to me for a second. Eh? You mean me? Mikaru is calling me for the first time. Will the sun rise from the west tomorrow? Normally she would just ignore me, but... Or tell me to leave me alone. Let's hear your opinion for a minute, then. It... it doesn't matter. Also, why all of a sudden are you asking for my opinion? What kind of change is this? You normally tell me to leave you alone. Fine, leave then. <laughs> no, I don't mean it like that. I was just wondering what's going on. What's the issue? Of course, it was a process of elimination. I can't talk to crazy cops, and the rest are just stupid and fools. 
that means I don't look like a fool to you. And before you misunderstand something here, you are, of course, an idiot. Incompetent. <laughs> if you weren't Meikaru, you wouldn't be able to say stuff like this to people's faces. Oh well. You know, I'm going to tell you that your image has gotten a little bit better lately. Especially after yesterday's class trial, though there was no meaningful praise from the psycho cop or mine. Huh? I'm not sure if I want to be praised. Why? Are you- why? Are you dissatisfied? No, of course, I'm happy. Just a little surprising is all. What kind of heinous villain do you see me as? Did you know my talent? I'm a high school professor. I mean, it's what a teacher does. I'll admit that you did commendable work. Honestly, until this moment, I was considering her to be a heartless villain. I'll have to apologize for that in my heart. Don't be mistaken. If you compare this with scores, I only gave you a D. Where, where you have only received F, from my standards, that is. Yesterday, you were relatively okay. Honestly, the worst thing to say is that you believed in my testimony to the end, didn't you? Can't wait to see who's gonna be the world's best student in Meikaru's standards. What was the reason for calling me, anyway? Meikaru is see seeking for opinions now. Usually, you use your own judgment, right? True. You know me well by now. Even so, I'm asking now because there's a hypothesis that it's so absurd I can't even believe it. That's the reason I want to hear someone's opinion on this matter. Mikaru suddenly became serious. It's a hypothesis that even Mikaru can't believe. What in the world is it? You see, Incompetent, once you listen to my words, you will understand what I mean. In the class trial yesterday, the last statement that was made by Kinji Uehara, remember? The children's lives were taken as a bargain, and he was forced to murder to save them. Yes, I recall. But the children of the church ended up... Indeed. Kinji Uehara was played with Monokuma's tricks. All the children had already been turned into corpses. If you look up, at, up to this point, you may think that the children were dead from the time they threatened Kinji Uehara already. The priest said he even spoke with them himself. If that's the case, at least two weeks before we opened our eyes in this school, that is, when Kinji Uehara was threatened, it would make sense that the children were alive by that time, correct? Did you understand up to this point? Yo, $20 from Astral Thunder. Nesmi, long time lurker, but I just wanted to say I'm so happy that you're my favorite YouTuber, and also you're the reason I'm playing through Umineko for the first time. Yo, let's go, I'm so happy. I'm glad to get anybody uh, hooked on Umineko, and I'm so glad that you like my stuff. Thanks for sticking around, and thanks for the donation. Uh, what's wrong? If you didn't, under if you didn't understand this much. Oh, n no, I did understand. It's just that Mikaru looks really looks like a professor. So when you said, do you understand, it felt like a competent teacher. Skepticism. You know I just won't tell you. <laughs> you know I just won't tell you, so just fuck off. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was wrong, so please let me keep listening. I'm curious. This is why I don't like talking to you. Someone that keeps changing the subject, like you. I hate that the most. Anyways, the kids would have been alive until about two weeks ago. That seems that seems correct, because Uehara seemed to recognize them. But there's an issue here. You must have seen it, right? That video had white bones in the children's bodies. Yeah, it was horrible, so I immediately turned away, but... It's definitely strange. They're alive by the time Kinji Uehara was threatened. Humans who existed for only two weeks or so, they reveal as bones, and the bodies were already way corrupted to even think it was recent. Huh? Considering that your stupid head doesn't understand, it takes a considerable amount of time to make a body decay, and that only the bones remain. Of course, there would be- there could be exceptions depending on the weather, climate, topography, and microbial con conditions, but I can affirm this. It doesn't make sense for a body to decay in two weeks and turn into a skeleton. Music kinda loud? Okay, I will turn it down a little bit. But yeah, uh, obviously we're probably getting into the, uh, the, uh, logic of how, uh, they've probably actually had their memories for, like, several years erased or something like the original DR1 cast. Also, Horse Fry gifted two, 10 memberships, let's go! Thank you so much! Monokuma's just gonna be popping up in front of, uh, Ray's face for the next couple minutes. <laughs> But then, it's a contradiction? Uehara wouldn't have lied about this. There's also the chance that the tape was recorded with various audio files in advance. And play them according to the situation, but I can't figure out what that priest said. 
so this is just speculation in the end. To be more certain, even if we assume that the children died when we received the notice of admission to Hope's Peak Academy, it's impossible to be only with Bones. I understand it. At least it took a long time. But it was only a few weeks ago that we came to, the, to Hope's Peak Academy. Was it a video of another body? No, Uehara definitely recognized the children, right? <laughs> yeah, Uehara recognized their bones. He did x-rays on them before every sermon. <laughs> what the hell happened to those kids? Yes, I thought about that as well. And then, a ridiculous assumption came out. That's why I tried to get your opinion on this. What was the assumption? We are... maybe we... We may have spent a long time in this Hope's Peak Academy. Define Obsessed. This is actually a really cool way of introducing the fact instead of just photos. I, I agree. I think this is actually a really cool way to present this information. No, <laughs> horse fry. I was just so hyped to hear Astral Thunder was a first time Umineko reader. Overtaken by the Umineko hype, I must be generous. <laughs> so true. <clears throat> oh, yeah, he recognized a lot of them from their clothes, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure I'm following. No, I understand where you're coming from, but I really have no idea. No, it's fine. Actually, I don't understand this myself, either. Eh? Actually, there is one more reason for this assumption. A few days ago, when the third floor just opened, you said you found a picture in the art room? Ah, that picture. Oh, yeah! Yes, this! That picture was a group photo of our classmates, who didn't even remember taking it. In that picture, we were smiling brightly enough to make this murder school feel like a lie. If that picture is real, we may have spent a considerable amount of time already enrolled and we just don't remember it. No way. Aren't you thinking too much ahead just by looking at bones and corpses? That's not the only thing. I have one more. The paper in the library. I don't know if you saw, but it was written like this. Hope's Peak Academy will be shut down. You mean that one? That's right. Isn't it weird? Just a few weeks ago, we came to the entrance ceremony, and we didn't even hear that the school was going to be shut down. Even the entrance ceremony placard was hung on the school gate. This too. If we can't remember the time we spent at the school, it must be because of it. No way. It can't be. Why can't we remember such an important thing in the first place? Not even one person, but all of us? There's a possibility. One. Monokuma. The mastermind erased our memories. Wouldn't that make sense? All of us. Our memories were removed by the mastermind? I know it's ridiculous. That's why I'm asking for your opinion. When you think about it like that, it seems to be connected somehow. I'm not sure yet, and I think it's excessive overthinking. Th that notice could be forged by Monokuma, but, and it's not impossible to create photos with technology these days. <laughs> In the case of the body, it may have been manipulated to speed up the corruption, which means it's far-fetched to the last bit. The probability that my hypothesis is really the truth is endlessly low. Still, I feel a little reorganized after talking with someone else. Even for an incompetent, it may have helped you, right? Yes, I'll take that as a compliment. Withhold this ridiculous hypothesis. Apart from that, there's one more thing I want to ask. I think th this is the longest time I've been talking to Meikaru in the entire t uh, in the entire time we've been in the school. Voice is kind of low. Uh, I don't know. I'm at the usual volume. I'll just turn down the music a little bit more, maybe. Mikako Kurikawa, you got that exorcist woman. How is she normally? What kind of person is she? Eh? Kurikawa? Well, I don't think we've spoken that often, or much to talk about either. She just speaks less. There are a lot of times when she's dazed. Nothing in particular. To notice, I guess. Assuming that there's a mastermind among us, that woman is the most likely candidate. What? Kurikawa's the mastermind? Before that, do you really think there's a mastermind among our group? I think it's very likely. That's because it mixes within us and makes the board move as they like. But the mastermind appears in front of us through Monokuma, right? Even if it's a doll or a machine that can be controlled, Monokuma always appears. Even when we're gathered. That's enough. It can be manipulated so that it can't be detected, or it can be an AI. But that's not what's important. 
but that Mikiko Kurakawa may have some kind of relationship with the Mastermind. Why would Kurakawa? When Monokuma stopped yesterday, there's not one but two suspicious things. I don't think it's like the hypothesis I mentioned earlier. This is a firm doubt. But I can't be very helpful with information. Maybe you can, incompetent. Now it's over. I've been talking for too long with you. It's making me feel all dizzy. You gave me very confusing information, and now it's done. I don't think I can sleep now because of the things you told me, Mikaru. Think hard. Alone. Now my business is over with you. Can we do this again in 10 billion years? <laughs> That's too long. The universe will start again by that point. More than that, the investigation on the fourth floor, Mikaru. We're done. Don't talk to me. Our business is over. I'll call you again next time we have a case. This is why I can't tell if we're having a discussion over one or a one-time deal. Still, the stories Mikaru told me in detail, those are things I'll need to think about later. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. This is another locked room. I can't get in. School director's office. It looks like an important place. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we can go into this room. Yeah, Kenjo is in here. Uh... Let's, uh, over here before we talk to him. Huh? Is something here? On a desk in the teacher's office, I found a picture stuck in a file. When I opened it, I see what the picture was. Eh? Who? Yeah, what? What was in the picture was a white-dressed, tall, handsome man. <laughs> Yuki? <laughs> but I couldn't even guess who he was. I think I've seen him before, but who is that? Kinjo, wait a minute. Come here for a second. What? Did you find something? This... Do you know who this is? This guy. Where did you find this? It was just sandwiched between files here. There was a picture of someone, but who is it? I don't know who he is, but there's someone who looks alike. Looks alike? You and I were in the science lab together, right? Hope's Peak Academy's first 58th graduation album. Oh yeah, that's right! Ah! Somehow I felt I saw him before, but after listening to Kinjo's words, I knew it for sure. A few days ago, when the third floor was opened, the owner of the graduation album I found in the science lab, Kisaragi Hanzo, and the man in the picture, had very similar appearances. Kisaragi Hanzo? Is that him? No. Although they look similar, they're different. In the first place, Kisaragi Hanzo, he would already be an uncle by now. Isn't this a picture of him when he was young? Again, that's not likely to be the case. The picture's too clean for a picture of a few decades ago. In this case, what you can think of is, I would believe it's a blood relative. Oh, definitely. Again, another thing related to Kisaragi Hanzo was discovered. There's something I find odd about him too. But as of now, I don't know who- what does- what does this mean? And why? The person in the picture, it doesn't look like the first person I saw. Kinjo? It's nothing. Well done, Maida. You seem to be talented in discovering things too, don't you? Well, anyways, I'll have to show this to the others, and ask for opinions. Maida, hold it. Huh? Yeah? Why? Please be quiet to the others about that picture. And this picture. Can I have it for a bit? Eh? I found some information that may have something, but you're telling me to just stay still? I'm sorry, but please do that. No one else must know about this. Especially Mikako Kurakawa. Kurakawa again? You suspect Kurakawa too, Kinjo? A few days ago, when she told us to report the investigation of the third floor, it was when Maida mentioned the name of Kisaragi Hanzo that woman clearly reacted to that. It's Kisaragi Hanzo, who may be holding the key of the current situation. However, don't you find it suspicious that only she reacted alone? That's... I apologize, but please cooperate. I hope we can all escape together, but I don't want to be with someone who might have something to do with the Mastermind. I'll keep the picture. Ah. Can we not bump the mic, please? Eventually, because of Kinjo's momentum, I couldn't refute anything and even gave him the picture. Mikaru and everyone are suspicious of Kurikawa now. How should I act? What is it, Maida? Just to make sure, did you forget what I said? No, that's secondary. What I'm going to do is investigate. Kinjo, tell me if you find anything while rummaging through the desks. Yeah, 
If it's an investigation, I'll understand. Anyway, if we can get out of this horrible place, our trust can be restored once again. So, have you found anything yet? You've been staring at the wall for a while now. It's something odd. Odd? Like? It's so weird. Maybe this is... What's weird? It's just a normal school office. Actually, when the second floor was opened a few days ago, didn't Kinjo say the same thing in the library? Also in that library, what was weird about it? I'd rather tell you to look into it, but I'll let you, but I'll let you know, because there's no reason to hide it. Look at all the papers here. As Kinjo said that, he began to search through the files and papers on the desk that a teacher seemed to be using. There were eight four paper-sized documents and a few thick books on the desk. It's so weird. Maybe if I treat these panels like a phone and input this specific code. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Never again. Look at what's in there. How to establish the theory of smartphone electrical recognition. Electromagnetic railgun operation verification patient certificate. 21 considerations on elementary particles. Introduction to advanced physics. Opinion report on humanoid AI. Problems based on magnetic field and thermal recognition system. I felt strange. Why? All of the books that are here bloom of strange and suspicious things in some parts. Now do you realize? What's weird? Does the school have books like these? It's like, this is more like a lab than a school. That's right. I don't know if it was just one or two places. In the library, as well as the school office, all of the books are like this. The library has these too? Maida, do you hate reading? If you've read the books in the library, you would know this. I'm amazed you can even read these books. If that's the case, what in the world happened? I don't know. Why did Hope Speak Academy dispose of all the general books? Or, this is not an actual school? No way. This is Hope Speak Academy, which proved to be a brochure brought by Meikaru on the first day, didn't it? That's true. However, there wouldn't be a question like this for no reason. There must be something else. This is what I've investigated so far. I'm going to do a little more research on the fourth floor. Although, the only open place is this school office. I understand. Kinjo, is it okay to share these facts with the others? No, don't let them know. Okay, I was confused because I didn't know what to do with this info. Kinjo immediately refused at that moment. No matter how pressured Kinjo is, he wouldn't be reluctant to convey information through me. It's because some of you are being suspicious. Mikako Kurakawa. This woman's a main suspect. I really hope you don't le leak information to this woman as much as possible. Why? What did Kurakawa do? What did she do? She did too much. Anyway, just know that. Kinjo. We're done, right? And I feel like I want to investigate for myself now. Please don't talk anymore. I have something to think about. As Kinjo said that, he silently began to investigate alone. Somehow, after Uehara's class trial, I feel like things have started to change. So does Kinjo, and so do I. I seem to have looked around all the newly opened places. I decided to return to the dormitory. All right. Well, lot going on here. Oh, hey. Kabashikawa, what are you doing? Ah! Maida, you gave me a scare. You said you would sleep more today. Are you okay now? Yeah, right, about that. Otori also woke up. I'm trying to eat breakfast right now. Is that right? While you guys were sleeping, we've been looking into the newly opened fourth floor. After you're done, you guys also join in the investigation. The fourth floor. Okay, let's go in. Shortly after we entered the dining hall, Tyra and Iranami re returned from the investigation. Now then, let's talk about what we, what we discovered on the fourth floor. Since there's neither Kinjo nor Kurikawa, which were originally the roles that conducted the gatherings, I unintentionally took over. Something feels very awkward. Tyra is staring at me with an angry look. Sorry about that. Originally, we should have investigated together. Oh, right. We didn't have much to investigate together anyways. Huh? Is that so? Yeah, the fourth floor is quite large, and there were many classrooms, but... There were the normal classrooms, a teacher's office, information processing room. There's also an office of the academy's director in the ballroom. One thing to note is that among them, except the general classrooms in the school's office, everything else was locked. What? Did you find something in the normal classrooms in the school's office? 
Nope, nothing at all. Eh? No, well, to begin, me and Satsuki-chan checked the windows as always, but it was the same. The iron plates didn't even budge. The classroom's harvest is zero as usual. How is the school's office? Well, I don't know about the school's office. I couldn't get in properly because Kinjo was investigating inside. Yeah, that's why me and Akane just searched for anything in the hallway. Of course, I couldn't find anything in the hallway either. There's no need to additionally confirm it with such enthusiasm. So the school's office seems to have been carefully investigated by Maida-kun. So why didn't you tell us if you found something, Maida-kun? Uh. Huh? What is it? You two have a strange behavior going on. Did you fight? No, that's not the case. So, Maida, what was it like? The school's office? Uh, about the school's office. I tried to open my mouth as usual, but soon I paused. If you found it, then you already know. It's not a big deal, but during the conversation with Kinjo, the book's weirdness and suspicion of the school's facilities, and crucially, a picture of someone who resembles Hanzo Kisur Kisuragi. Yuki? But I was told by Kinjo not to tell my other friends about these things. Well, to be exact, I was told not to tell Kurokawa, but... There's no Kurokawa now, so should I tell them? Oh! Huh. Hmm. Question to uh, people who have played this game already in the chat. Uh, is there a right answer to this? Like, am I gonna get killed? Or like, uh, or is something terrible gonna happen if I choose the wrong one? This choice does not matter. Nope, no. Oh, it's like, uh, okay. It's a chapter four moment, illusion of choice. There's only one ending change? There is an important choice, but not until later. Okay. All right, well, in that case, then uh, I'm not gonna side with Kinjo. If I'm trying to hide what I've investigated, talking about it, wouldn't it be better? I thought, but contrary to my thoughts, my mouth only closed tighter. Why? Strangely, I caught in my mind, saying that there may be a mastermind among us. Various hypotheses- Oh, so he's literally just gonna do whatever he wants, despite the, the choice. It's not easy. It's unlikely to be possible to say this. Oh, so I literally can't tell them. Like- Okay, just out of curiosity, if I choose this again, then is he just gonna say the same thing? Yep, he's just gonna say the same thing. Okay, I, I'm not allowed. I have to I have to just stay quiet then. In the end, it's not a clue to escape. If I told something like this, it will only create confusion. I secretly comforted myself and decided to shut my thoughts. Yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't find anything special either. Huh. So, does that mean the investigation on the fourth floor showed no results? Lies. Huh? You didn't really find anything? You talked so much with Kinjo, didn't you? I you saw? Maida, what's she talking about? What'd you talk with Kinjo about? It's not just that. You spoke with Mikado a long time in the hallway, right? Uh, something you seem very su something you seem very surprised. Why aren't you talking about that? Uh, that's Maidakun, what's wrong with you today? Don't you want to get out of here? Of course I want to get out of here. I don't want to be in this terrible place ever again. I know, but I can't even see it as a clue to escape from here. So how can we get out if I told them this? Uh, hey, why are you so aggressive? Calm down and let's get along as usual. It's not just about Maidakun, Harukun, Teriyakun. The same goes for both of you. You broke our promise to have breakfast together and you slept more at your own will. No, I was just suddenly more sleepy, that's all. Yeah, I know that yesterday's nightmare is the impact of a hopeless class trial. But if you just sit down, you won't be able to get out of this school for the rest of your life. I want to investigate hard. I'm just trashed because my talent's not helpful. I'm not that smart nor strong. But you guys are different. You guys can achieve more where I can't, right? So even if you can't see any hope, why don't you work hard enough to overcome it? 
That doesn't work. How do you even do that? Maitakun? What are you saying? No matter what we do, Monokuma always blocks everything we do. Even the single thread of hope that we barely discovered did not leave Monokuma alone. That guy really intends to keep us here forever. Do you think you can seriously run away from such a ridiculous being? Huh? Even murder, the only one who can get out according to the rules. And yet, look at Uehara's case. There was a twisted trap like that. How do you overcome despair? Why am I saying this? I wasn't trying to say all of this. M Maitakun, why... Why are you saying... What are you... Indeed, because the despair is so big, will you get out of here? It's better if we do it together. I'm so desperate right now. What does it mean to try hard? It's useless if you try hard. It's stupid to live here all my life. There are places for us to go back. People waiting to see us, right? I would rather live here for a lifetime. It might not be bad. I can forget about a place to go back to, or the people waiting outside. Uh, Mida? Uh. <laughs> you! Uh. At that moment, Tyra raised her hand, so I thought she would slap me, but the pain that I expected did not come after a while. When I opened my eyes, Tyra was trembling with her hand that was about to hit me, stopped in midair. Only from Maitakun. I didn't want to hear that from Maitakun. Even if everyone despairs, I thought... I thought Maitakun wouldn't give up hope. Now I don't know what you're like anymore. Well, damn. No one could say anything else. I couldn't afford to care about the others. The only thing that hangs over my mind was Tyra's yelling, disappointed in me. I was trash. Me talking weird was enough to piss Tyra off. Even when we get to this point, I regret what I said and I couldn't say it. It was proof that I was just garbage. Hey, Maida, don't be too discouraged. I too, I think, the same as you do. Yeah, same goes for me. I've been desperate since yesterday, so I know that feeling. I just want to give up on it all now. Stupid guys. What? You guys are all stupid. You're the fools of the entire world. Yuki, just know this. Hope isn't about finding it. It's about creating it. Wow. Wisdom. Wisdom from Satsuki. Satsuki based. In the end, amb Im ambiguously, our relationship was further cracked, and the worst investigation report ended. I... I didn't even know if I had a mind or not anymore, and I had no choice but to st spend my time blankly. Hello, this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it's nighttime. The restaurant will be closed and locked. Well then, have good dreams and good night. Hello, everyone. It's morning, 7 a.m. It's wake-up time. Let's have a lively day today, too. Morning? It's morning? So in the end, yesterday, I was lying down doing nothing at all. Strangely, my body had no power at all. Doing nothing, and doing what I have to do once again, I looked back. Hope isn't to be looked for, it's to be created. Did I have the ability to create hope this whole time? Before that, I should go and have breakfast. If I keep doing this, I think I'll become a really worthless human. Damn. All right. I really liked Satsuki's speech, her little speech. That was good. She's uh, wiser than she lets on most of the time. I like characters like that. Breakfast time as usual. I've been sick all day yesterday. Even Kurokawa, who didn't show up, attended. But the atmosphere was the worst that I could ever imagine. Among them, the one I care about is Tyra. I didn't even know what to say to Tyra, but I couldn't even think of anything. I didn't want to hear that kind of thing only from Maida-kun. 
I thought that even if I, everyone despaired, Midaku wouldn't give up hope. Tyra, did she believe in me so much? But I'm just a ver very ordinary high school student. Unlike everyone else, I'm not as great as Tyra thinks I am. Dear God, how can I overcome despair in this situation? Thank you very much for the meal. I'll go investigate now. Tyra! Maida. Oh, yes? Yesterday. What happened? Everyone's acting strange. It's no big deal. No big deal, idiot. Since the guys have no remedy for this, me and Akane will try harder than these fools. Adios! You did do something. Mida didn't do anything wrong. It's the situation itself. There are things that the situation itself can't help it. Yeah, Mida's, uh, Mida's also a human. They can't always be positive, can you? Yesterday. What happened? Me and Otori were in our rooms yesterday morning, so I'm not sure. After the class trial, the fourth floor was opened, but I guess what happened was because of the investigation. Tyra said that Mida clearly noticed something, but he didn't tell, so... The move became a little harsh. But what Mida said was throwing complaints. There was no hope. He started to say things like that. Hey, thank you for the five dollars from Beepus. Appreciate it. Mida, who should who never showed a weak figure, seemed to have been very disappointing for Ty to Tyra. Uh ten ten I believe that's pounds. Uh from It's Me. Hope you're enjoying DRA Chapter 4. It is my favorite as well. Anyway, have fun. I am enjoying it. Thank you so much for the donation as well. That's why the situation has become like this. Yeah, it is pounds. Okay. I don't know why I like second guessed that for a second. I was like, uh, what? Uh, brain? My, my brain always gets like so fried during these DR DRA streams because I have to do like twice as much uh, like thinking to understand when the lines get like a little uh, wonky sounding. <laughs> That's why the situation's become like this. But to be honest, it's not Midas' fault, right? Going to the fourth floor, there aren't many open places and we don't see any clues to escape. Honestly, now I'd rather live here for the rest of my life than go out and kill each other. I feel that's our choice too. You can't! Kurikawa? If we despair, it's like being eaten. So, don't say to live here forever. Do you know how scary it is? Suddenly what now? Just let me be. No, you shouldn't give up. Even if you want to understand with your head, you don't want to. I'll do it somehow. I... I'll do something about it. Kurokawa? Oh, there's that that noise again, like the little zap. Are you okay? Are you not feeling well yet? You passed out so suddenly in the passage under the secret staircase. You should probably rest a little. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. You guys, please continue investigating. What is with that? There's something going on with her. I don't know what it is, but I, it's so strange. Mikako Kurakawa. Kinjo and Mikaru is suspicious of her, the coldest and the fastest thinker of us all. I can tell that she's actually an ordinary girl, but she's not normal. <laughs> Sometimes she says or does something that is really questionable in truth. Does Kurakawa really hold some kind of secret from us? I... Honestly, like, the thing is... I... Obviously, there is something going on with her, but, like, I don't think she's like suspicious in a bad way i think that maybe she's like uh i think she's probably gonna end up being like uh you know how like sakura was like uh treated like uh like a mole or something 
Like, I think Kurokawa is going to uh, end up having something like that happening to her. Even if she's not, like, a mole necessarily, like, I think there's something going on like that. Like, Monokuma has something on her or something like that. <clears throat> Continue the investigation. I'm not going to continue investigating anymore. There's no way we can find anything else that neither Kinjo or Meikaru can find. Distant despair that can't be seen even one inch ahead. Kinji was already revealed as the mole last chapter, so it's probably something different here. Yeah, that, that's what I meant, was like, I know it's d not going to necessarily be like that exactly, because we already had a mole, but like, I feel that there's still something like similar going on. <clears throat> Even so, let's investigate. The chances are low, but we have to do it. Hello everyone! Are you in good health? I've prepared a premium gift for everyone who's become a little bit upset lately. To all the students alive, please gather in front of the ballroom on the fourth floor of the main building, because it's really a very memorable gift. Come by all means! Oh boy. Oh boy. Is this, uh, is this just regular, like, Monokuma shenanigans, or is this going to be a, a motive? Let's see. What? Ah! What else? Will Monokuma also decorate the walls now? Damn it, why can't he leave us alone for a while? While hope is hard to even find a single line of it, despair, once it's on fire, it spreads at a terrifying rate. It was painful to have to follow Monokuma's orders so empathetic and helpless. It looks like you've all gathered. <laughs> what are you plotting this time? Plotting? There's no such thing. You guys, you always think the bear's the wicked one. There's no bad reactions here. Do you really think no one knows your tricks by now? You're going to try to make us despair with something weird again. Nope, this time it's the opposite. Since the last class trial was over, you guys seemed droopy, so I prepared a gift to cheer you up. A gift? What kind of gift? Yes, that's right. You will find out once you come in. Come in? The ballroom was opened? It was definitely a locked place. What do we do? This smells 100% suspicious, but... If you don't follow, you'll have to anyway. He might try to kill you for disobedience. Is there anyone who wants to die for their own choice? Indeed. I don't know what's in there, but we got no choice but to follow. I don't think it will increase our desire no matter what comes out. My carpet! I got the carpet done! It looks great! <laughs> Do you like my carpet? I'm remodeling. Wow, it's pretty. Were you surprised? This is our Hope Speak Academy dance hall of the ballroom. So why is there such a place in the school? So, are you guys going to tell us why we're here? You're very vigilant, huh? Didn't I say it? This is really a gift for all of you. You guys, these days, have been really out of luck. This is why murders won't happen. That's why I was wondering if you guys could be refreshed. I've decided to hold a dance party. D dance? A party? Wh what is that? It's literally a dance party. You guys just have fun dancing from now on. But why should we do that? Huh? Why? You think this is a trick? There's a lot of delicious food, too. D delicious food? Don't go over there. There must be some kind of trick to this. Oh, but this is true. I really don't have bad intentions this time. So let's do this. I'll write a memorandum. Memorandum? Wait there! Having a, like, a school dance in a, in a Danganronpa game is, like, a 
fantastic idea, actually. I think that's so fun. That's such a, like, fun, funny idea. After saying that, Monokuma took out a piece of paper and started writing something down. Now how about this? Dear Monokuma sincerely wants the students to cheer up, and this party is a part of that. I promise not to do anything until the students are satisfied. We can do anything we want? How can we trust you like this? Jeez, you're so stupid! Can't you see the official stamp of the school director here? As long as this is taken, I have no choice but to follow the rules, even with my pride. So you're instructed to, you're instructed to follow the school rules written on the electronic student handbook, right? Huh? Oh, uh, I don't know what this has to do with that, but I guess that's true. Hm, I like it. You want to dance? I'll give you a dance. Mikaru? No matter what happens, he wants us to join this party. Anyway, wouldn't it be obvious that it would be fo force us to do this? There's no way to run away, and we have no choice in the matter but to do it because I hate dragging things. I'll even write on this memo, so just do it. Can we trust Monokuma so easily? Mikaru is right. I don't know what you're thinking, but let's follow her just this once. Without knowing the true intention of Monokuma like this, all of us suddenly joined the party. This should be enough. Oh my god! They're little suits! In the mirror, I could see myself standing awkward, looking in a nice suit. Monokuma told us at first everyone had to decide to change into a party outfit. At the back of the dance hall, there were dozens of private changing rooms with different kinds of clothing, and we decided to go in and change our clothes. This is so good! It's weird, no matter how much I look at it. Is this really okay? I can believe that Monokuma wrote a memo and stamped it, but is it fine to naively just gloss over it? Even if he tells us to play along, it's not a situation to play around, and not even a mood for it. Well, I'm all dressed up, so let's join the others. Even if I worry alone, I can't do much. Oh, there are, there are concept designs for the characters who have died and how they'd look if they lived here? Aw, I'll have to look at that later. That's so cute. I think I was the first one to change clothes. There seems to be no one outside yet. It's getting late, everyone. Yo! With the black dress! Aww. I guess, like, I guess it's because she's, like, wearing a maid outfit all the time, but, like, uh, black... Like, uh, a black dress does actually look very nice on her. I think it's a, it's a good color for her. Tyra. Tyra's wearing a sleek dress emphasizing adulthood and a black color, not the maid clothes she wore every day. Her hair was loosened and she had more makeup than usual, so I could see more from Tyra than the original outfit. What? Don't look too drilled like that. I'm not used to clothes like this. Oh, uh, sorry. It fits so well on you. Wow, we're, uh, we're doing the fashion tier list right now. <laughs> Tyra didn't speak anymore. Come to think of it, I was in a cold war with Tyra a few days ago. I don't think she's still angry. <laughs> Rabber, emphasizing adulthood? I, yeah, I think that's just kind of awkward translation. I, I think he's probably just saying like it makes her seem more adult or like she seems more mature than usual. Later on, the others who changed their clothes one after another gathered to the dance hall. Oh, look at you! That suit looks so snazzy on you, Teria. Hey, Maida and Tyra were out already? You both getting along well? You're looking great! Hey, Teria, why are you so hyped? Because the clothes in the dressing room set my heart on fire! Well, I was really thrilled to look around and try on a variety of clothes. I'm a merchant, of course, but I'm interested in fashion, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10. This is an easy 10 out of 10. Oh, all right. Okay, you, you clean up all right. You kind of look like an ace attorney prosecutor, Kabashikawa, but, you know, you're doing all right. Doing all right. You guys are here. Well, how about this outfit? I wore it because it looked awesome. Is that okay? You seem like a prince in a play. Tyra, do you like this outfit? Not really. It's too shiny. Seems cheap. Has been dejected. <laughs> Why are you ignoring his feelings? If 
By the way, I might draw some art for you. Is there any way I could send it? Uh, sorry for asking. No, don't uh, don't worry at all. There's uh, no problem in asking. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to post art, uh, feel free. Uh, usually just like I would just advise people to tag me on Twitter or something. Um, but I, I also have business email linked on my website in my card if uh, you don't have social media. So you can always email it to me in uh, the worst case as well. Anyway, yeah, 0 out of 10. What is this hairstyle? What are you doing? Uh, why do you look like you're doing a bad Spy Family cosplay? Absolutely awful. Oh, Kinjo. Although Kinjo's style was cool, he still looked like a fierce animal. Without a word, he passed by us and went to the corner alone. What a loser! <laughs> None of us could ever get a hold of Kinjo. Mikaru? This... this is pretty good. I... I... I think this is pretty good. Um... The hairstyle is like a little... I, f I feel like she would have looked better with just the regular hairstyle and glasses still, but like, I do really like the outfit. It's very, very good. This is like an eight, nine out of 10 for me. Uh, although I might be biased because I do really like Mikaru a lot. <laughs> what, don't speak to me. The appearance of Mikaru in a bright scarlet dress was so much that my mouth was left open. The usual long sleeve has a high defensive look. And the dress, which exposes the shoulders and- Okay, Yuki, come on, buddy. You, you don't need to vocalize all your thoughts. Eh, what? Make her? Eh? Uh, huh? What is it? Enough with your stupid expressions. If you're having a party, you have to do it properly, right? The two Canadian dollars from Catthulhu, 10 out of 10, because I'm very sapphic. Uh, yeah, I can agree with you on that one, though. <laughs> Zero out of 10 for Maida's reaction, true. Meikaru passed us by saying those words. In contrast to Kinjo, she seemed to have some excitement towards us. Aw, she's actually excited for the party. She just doesn't want to admit it. This is okay. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I think like the 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 weird like almost like blue swimsuit look uh, is what I would necessarily think for Kurakawa. I would have preferred that she like maybe had something that was a little closer to her regular color scheme, uh, clothing wise. I don't know. It's just uh, this is like a yeah. I'm gonna say this is like a six out of ten. Also, like, the, the, the cross necklace. Like, what's going on with this? Kurokawa, huh. Well, does it suit you well? Oh, yeah, she is an exorcist, though. That is a good point. But, yeah, still, it just kind of makes her look like a Sunday school teacher. She already had the cross necklace. I know, it's just, like... I don't know, with, combined with this outfit though, it is just like very strange to me. I just don't think it really gels very well. <clears throat> well, I do love goth women, but I don't, I don't feel like this outfit is goth enough. <laughs> Maida, uh, yes? Kurokawa approached me and whispered in small words that could only be heard by me. I don't know if Monokuma is planning a scheme, but we should use this crisis in reverse. Got it? Huh? What? Reverse? Okay. Kurokawa said that, stood still, and shut her lips. I don't know anything, however. What do we do? So then, are we all gathered now? No, we haven't seen Satsuki yet! Give me Satsuki's outfit! No, wait, I don't see Urinami. What is she doing getting so late? Satsuki-chan? No way that happened. At that moment, we were all No, no, you can't take her away from me before you give me her outfit! 
No matter what party or whatever, you're still in a dangerous situation where you could end up killing each other. What's more, the situation where Monokuma is doing the suspicious event, it was strange that nothing had happened. Tara, let's find her. Huh? Yeah. So she's late because she's blowing up the massive inflatable dinosaur costume. <laughs> True. Will they be okay? I wouldn't worry too much. Don't mind it. That girl's late. But it's not like it's been a day or two, right? Somewhere in me, I couldn't get rid of my anxiety. I had no choice but to wait for Kurikawa and Taira who went to found find her. And a few minutes later... Kurikawa, Taira, how'd it go? What about Iranami? Suddenly, both of them seemed surprised for something were breathing, breathing heavily. The anxiety in my heart started to grow even more. No. Where are you guys tired? Come on. There's no way. You guys better see it for yourselves. Look. Look? What? Okay, she's fine. Crisis averted. Oh my god! Yes, it is I, Satsuki. I've changed my clothes. Oh my god, she's so cute! Holy shit, this is a 10 million out of 10. At that moment, everyone was silent until the girl in front of our eyes opened her mouth. I was seriously thinking who this girl was. Iranami? Is it? What is it, Maida? If Satsuki isn't Satsuki, then who is it? Her usual clown costume and red nose were nowhere to be found, and Iranami's appearance was changed with her hair neatly tied to the side. Oh, she's so adorable. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> She looked more beautiful than before. This is not real. Not real, not real, not real. Real? Kobazing? Why did you suddenly start to roll? Well, this striking transformation's amazing, but why the heck were you so late? I was worried something happened to you. Setsuki-chan, she didn't know how to dress at all. She didn't know what to wear or what kind of clothes to wear to use, so we helped. Because she was moving so much, it was hard. But these clothes are very uncomfortable. Can I just not wear it? Denied! You must wear it! If you're having a party, you have to wear the right clothes for it. <laughs> I already hate this outfit. You've only appeared now. You changed as you said. Can we move on with this now? Can you move on? Why are you so nervous? Just have fun and play. I won't do anything. Even if you suddenly say that, it's a dance party. Dancing is the basics of a party. Why don't you try to move your body first without being still like a statue? Then you guys, because we have perfect match of men and women, please make a pair between a male and a female and begin dancing. Wow, homophobic Monokuma. Why can't the girls dance together, huh? You pair up with someone? Uh, pair? We do pairs? Make sure you pair up with the ki with the person you want. FYI, this is also a kind of recreation, so there's no way out. If you don't follow it, I'll only punish you. You've written a memorandum that you won't behave strangely, and you're doing it now. No way. Playing as much as you can is part of your studies. It's a natural thing as a teacher to punish you for saying you didn't like it. Who's the teacher? You're just a thing. Enough! I'll give you one minute of time limit. Come on, pair up already. The teacher hates dragon the most. I don't know why Monokuma has this sudden reaction over a recreational activity like this, but if I don't follow, I'll have no choice but to face a punishment. Unlike me, who thought that everyone would stay still in embarrassment as I was, the situation went faster than I thought. What? You were just pissed at him! Maida, let's dance. With me. Eh, Tyra? It's fine. You need a pair right now anyway, right? Because we can't go against Monokuma. That's right, but... Okay. Okay, yeah, I, I did guess that Satsuki was probably gonna go with Kabashikawa. Then I wanna dance with Kobazing. Huh? What? Hey, who else wants to... I think it's gonna be even more fun to be with Kobazing. Is that so? Well, if you're sure... How are you, Mr. Psych? <laughs> I shall ask, must we make a pair? Well, what to do now? 
Don't leave for no reason and dance with me, all right? Wouldn't that be good for both sides? In the current situation, that is. Fine. Do as you like. Uh, what? I haven't even decided yet, but everyone was paired up already. Um, uh, Kurikawa? Except for us, everyone was determined to pair. What should we do? Uh, dance with me. Do you want to? Yes. <laughs> I did it! Father, I finally got a girl! <laughs> uh, that was a joke. Funny. Wasn't it funny? Yahoo! Good! Everyone's paired up very nicely. Then shall we dance now? Let the music start! Are you winning, son? Oh, uh, classic music res classical music resonates, and we dance helplessly by the ruthless Monokuma. I don't know if I'm going to be the only one who is able to dance because I've never learned anything like this. But at the moment, I forgot that I was at Hope's Peak Academy, and I was. be the one to apologize. No, Tyra, there's no need to apologize, because it's my fault. Uehara died, and I lost my motivation. There was no hope, and I wanted to give up on everything. But if we give up here, the others who have died so far would, would have died in vain. Maki, Higa, Tomori, Hatano, Yamaguchi, Uehara. There's no point for being in despair. I have to muster and keep on holding hope. Even if it's hard, so I can't give up here. I've been trying to cut my ties with you all for a few days. I realized how desperate I was. In that way, maybe I should be thankful to Monokuma for giving me this chance to switch my way of thinking. Mitch not mentioned. Mitch was mentioned. Uh, that was Higa. That was his surname. Maitakun. Thank God, you finally, you're finally back to the way of the Maitakun I've known. Let's celebrate here. It doesn't matter whether or not Monokuma planned this, but right now, we have to reverse this crisis and regain our trust in each other. After saying that, only then I was able to understand Kurikawa's meaning when she said that. We have to use this crisis in reverse. This must be what Kurikawa wanted to say. Okay, Maitakun, so I can raise up the pace a little? Uh, wait, I'm still getting used to... Whoa! When the song was over, it was natural to keep dancing. Though it was hard to be dragged by Tyra's pace, but the conflict was, res was resolved, and my body moved excitedly, so I felt strangely refreshed. And I wasn't the only one. Hiranami, didn't I dance pretty well? Besides the dance, why'd you keep touching- Ugh, God. Pervert. I said it wasn't intentional, and I had to dance using my hand. I couldn't help it, okay? Is it over? Did you get tired? No, it's just that Kurikawa and me, you were tall and I was small. I thought I was gonna die from being dragged around. That's 
a bit complicated. What, you can dance properly? I'm intrigued. Who did you learn from? Why should I tell you that? I thought I made perfectly clear this, that I would not get involved with you guys. I admire your stubbornness, but it's unacceptable to take me like the rest of these people and treat me the same way. Although it seems that only the on, that only one place has a different atmosphere, the atmosphere has changed a lot from before entering the ballroom. As for the guys and the girls dance together, it should be for granted that a noose was released. The mood has softened quite a lot. Could it be that Monokuma really did this kind of event, hoping that we could be refreshed? <laughs> wow, everyone's doing very good. It's great to see women and men dancing. Monokuma. Is everyone with more energy now? It seems your faces have more color now, so the teacher is satisfied. Well, it's definitely a good thing that we're noisy as usual again. I still don't know what you're hiding, though. What's the purpose of doing this? I don't think you've come to your senses and did this out of goodwill. Seriously, how much can you be suspicious of me still? I said it over and over. The purpose is for you guys, guys to liven up. No more, nothing else. I mean it. If you don't want to be suspicious, you should have been at your you should have been at your usual behavior. Well, but he hasn't really done anything. It's true that I felt better while dancing. So why don't we decide to watch this situation for now? So can I leave now that I'm done dancing? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You probably didn't think this was the end, right? Eh, what now? There was something here too? What else are you trying to do this time? <laughs> you fools, there's no end to this yet. Trying to end the party without even having a party dinner. You don't even know the trick for having a party. Stay flexible. What? A party dinner? Come over here. The dining room's this way. I thought Monokuma was planning, to s planning something big, but it turns out he was going to serve us a dinner. We helplessly followed Monokuma. This is such a, like, a fun setup for a chapter. This is... A dinner party at our Hope's Peak Academy is something to be proud of. After spending time dancing and sweating, it's perfect for a meal, right? I'm actually kind of, I'm actually hungry, but you didn't put poison in it or something, did you? I'm actually nervous because I didn't do much. Itadakimasu! Uh, there's a bar. This is a flat soup? Oh, huh? Ah! Why is... Satsuki-chan, are you okay? Oh, this is so delicious that my tongue's about to melt. It's different from the food and dormitory dinner. You see now? I, is it really okay? Yeah, flat soup. You know, the carbonation's gone. <laughs> Mikaru, you're going to eat it? I can't guess what Monica was thinking either, but didn't I say it before? There's nothing we can do for now if we disobey. Don't whine like a flake and instead act confidently. Either way, it seems that Monokuma still wants to continue the party and I'm hungry too. <laughs> I don't care whether you eat or not, but don't sit next to me. Don't even talk. It'll make the taste sour. The two started eating without a care. I mean, of course, I'm hungry too. Uh, I don't know anymore. I'm hungry too. I don't even know why Monokuma's doing this. There's something delicious in front of you. You're not supposed to touch it. I'm Haruhiko Kabashikawa. I'm not a man who can't eat. Starting with Haru's movement, we who lost, who had lost to hunger went to the tables as if we were being led by something. Oh my, oh my. This is really, it's the greatest taste that I've ever tried for, I've, that I've tried once for years. I can't stop eating because it's so delicious. The dormitory dining food was delicious, but this is beyond imagination. I'm happy to be alive. Delicious. After sitting at the table and putting food in our mouths, we couldn't control ourselves. In addition to the physical hunger caused by our dance, the tension was relieved in the air, which had been heavier recently. It was finally released. Monokuma is clearly plotting something, but we didn't pay much mind to it. I was fascinated with the idea of having a good time with my friends. Only Kinjo looked at Monokuma and stopped his hand. 
Everyone seems to have a little bit more of energy, so Mr. Monokuma's happy. Now then, everyone, while you're enjoying the dinner happily, excuse me for a second. When you finish the meal, you'll have a little free time. Free time? Yeah, the party's still far away from over. I still have a lot of things to prepare. Take your free time for a while, and if I instruct you to do something, please gather to the dance hall where you danced before. What's it being prepared? That is a secret. It's a super surprise, so look forward to it. Oh, and the food here doesn't have unlimited refills like the dorm, but it's fine, so you can eat whatever you want. Nom 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 nom. Uh, hey, swallow something at least. You're shedding all of it in that pretty dress. They say free time? Can I go to my dormitory for a minute? I want to save these packs of food. Oh, and I'll change my clothes in the dressing room too since I'm done dancing. Can I change to my usual outfit now? Denied. Huh? What? Denied. Is there a worse word than it? To go to the dormitories or to change your clothes. It's denied, no matter what you think. Go ahead and change them if you can. Suddenly, the mood surrounding Monokuma changed. We couldn't keep up with the sudden change, and we were staring at Monokuma with no idea. Except for a few. Oh, I think I get what's going on here. This thing. Surely you didn't. Kinjo, what's wrong? No, maybe. It's possible. Kinjo-kun? Mikaru? What? What are you guys doing all of a sudden? <laughs> well, why would you? After all, I'll definitely show you. Spend your time freely, and if I call you, make sure to gather in the dance hall. See you later. Yeah, is this going to be like a funhouse thing all over again where he's like, Yeah, I invited you to dance! Now you can't leave! Oh, God. Did only Kinjo and Mikaru notice something? It wasn't clear to us, but I felt horribly anxious. What should we do? Do we go after him? I don't think so. Everyone, he said it was free time anyway, so I'll eat more here. Yeah, I'll eat some more too. If you don't eat this delicious food now, you're a loser. Is there going to be a second serving? Something feels awfully wrong here. Well, as Iranami said, it's a free time for us, so let's follow Kinjo and Mikaru for the re For the rest, you can continue eating more. Yeah, and I imagine that food will be limited, yeah. We barely returned to our previous relationship. I should have known, but we've already fallen into Monokuma's trap. Fuck. You can all go. From now on, Satsuki will not even spend, spend even seconds to eat all this delicious food. Good to know that you're in high spirits. This is so delicious. If anything happens, let me know. Uh... Yeah, there we go. Kinjo, what's going on here? Damn it, I got tricked. You got tricked? Yep, it's locked. Eh? Locked? For what reason? Somehow, Monokuma said he was going to prepare something. Was this his purpose? Monokuma's real purpose was to lock us up in the ballroom? You can't do it. That's what he meant by it. What a rotten individual. Wait a minute. What about our clothes? I'll go to the dressing room for a minute. Oh, can we move? No, we just have to wait. No way. The clothes we have, our belongings, all of it, it's gone. Ah! That means... Oh, that means we really are on our own in the ballroom? Hold on. Where's Kabashikawa and Iranami? They're staying in the dining room eating food. Kinjo, wait, where are you going? What's wrong now? Monokuma said about the food, not unlimited. There was only plenty, is what he said. Huh? Let's go back to the dining hall quickly. Haru, Iranami! What? You guys, suddenly you guys were running. What's wrong with Kinjo? This guy. Did you eat it all? Oh, of course. Why would I leave something so delicious? Oh, did you want some? Sorry. 
This idiot! Uh, cool off! What? Why are you like this all of a sudden? Hey, let go! Kinjo, what are you doing? Maida, what about Monokuma? Uh, that? I called it in a minute, and then when I went to see you, you were gone. What's with this guy? Can he even take a joke? Unfortunately, it's not a very joking situation right now. What the heck's going on? You all are turning blue in the faces. The ballroom door is locked. We're locked inside the ballroom. What? It's the same thing again? I think we've been caught in Monokuma's trap all along. Eh? <laughs> this is a big deal. What do we do? I see. But why did Kinjo do that to me? How long does Monokuma intend to keep us here? I don't really know. Unlike the dormitory's dining room, which had its infinite refill, the food here is limited. That is, even if we split everyone's peace little by little, it won't be enough. Because the two of you ate it all like pigs. Now you're going to be angry, aren't you? Uh, but how do you know it won't be the same like in the other dormitories? Is the same... is the same, and the food is depleting now. I don't know what Monokuma is aiming for, but I don't like it very much, because you've exhausted the food they prepared. Mikaru, where are you going? Don't talk to me. I'm going to investigate. I don't have time to be spending blank spent blanking like you. Hey, are we really trapped? We can't guarantee that yet, but the door isn't opening. It'd be nice if there was an emergency exit somewhere else. The clothes we took off are also gone. For the time being, I have to keep wearing a dress. Yeah, this uncomfortable thing for more days? Damn, it's no joke then. It seems like we've eaten all the food. What are we going to do? I'm so sorry. I'm guilty of dying from hunger. Calm down. We might be able to get out right away. There might be something that we don't know yet. But now what do we do? Kinjo and Meikaru seem to have gone to investigate. For now, let's investigate. Until Monokuma shows up. There's nothing we can do about the ballroom. Just a heads up, Chapter 4 Daily Life is really long. Like, I always say this and I'm wrong. But this is still, like, the start of the chapter. Oh, wow. Really? We've been going for nearly, like, three hours at this point. I mean, granted, the first hour was spent on free time events, but... We don't know anything yet. Yeah, the ballroom seems to be a bit bigger than I expected. Maybe there, aren't, there are clues that weren't in the other rooms, so think positively and let's research. <laughs> Tyra, why are you laughing? Oh, um, sorry. I did it unconsciously. We fell into Monokuma's trap again, even in the same ways, but I didn't give up, because I was relieved by Maida-kun's decision. Wait, really? Thank you. When did I get salt in my eyes? Whatever, let's just hurry up and investigate. If we had been, been up to this morning, we would have given everything and fell into despair at this point. The party held by Monokuma for this trap ironically revived our bonds. We haven't given up yet. If I investigate without giving up, I'm sure. Oh wow, we did finally get the chapter title card. A new generation of despair revolution. Hope is not seeking, it's creating. Uh, the Satsuki quote on the card makes me nervous. All right, hold on. Let me save real quick because it's been a hot minute. Okay. Maidakun, look at the refrigerator here. Refrigerator? Come to think of it, there was also one in the dining room. But it looks like a normal. With, it looks like a normal with refrigerator. It doesn't seem to have anything special. I don't mean that. Look at the contents. Eh? There's more food. Yeah, it wasn't that we ate everything a while ago. It's not as much as we ate before, but it's still plenty, so I wouldn't worry about food problems at least. I see. Thank God. Would you like to tell Haru and Satsuki soon? I feel kind of sorry for them. Okay, I will. Hmm. Okay. Probably nothing to check there. 
probably nothing to check here. Although there is delicious egg. No, I can't take delicious egg. Okay, let's see. Okay, how do? Damn it! It won't open. We already said it. We already said it was locked. You weren't kidding. This is our situation now. Me and Satsuki ate the limited amount of food. Isn't that right? What do I do? I'm sorry, Maida. What the hell have we done? Now maybe we're done for. We can't get out of here like this. Hold on. Check something like this. Okay. Mm. Sorry, just checking some notifications real quick. We can't get out of here like this. Calm down. We should be able to get out soon. We haven't done a proper investigation yet. M Maida. Yeah, I'll try. In the sense of paying the cost of the sin as much as I've done wrong. I'll work harder than anyone in the investigation. That's right. Rather, as we couldn't find anything on the fourth floor, we were able to search. A new area, so keep an open mind. Maida, you... Yeah? What is it? No, no, it's just that you're back to the usual, Maida. I'm thankful for that. That sounded the same as Tyra. Well, it's definitely the same in the ballroom, even though it's a desperate situation. It feels lighter compared to the dark feeling before my eyes a few days ago. Hope is not about finding it, but to create. Let's keep those little teachings always in our hearts. Okay. Let's give a look at some of these rooms. Okay, there are the clothes in here. Heard it from Tyra, and I've come here just because it really was true. All of our clothes are gone. Yeah, we have no choice but to keep wearing our clothes from this dressing room. Uh, I was about to ask if that was an H-bomb thing or an independent meme he referenced in that video. I think it is specifically an H-bomb thing, yeah, from the Pathologic video. Maybe, did we put something inside our clothes? Uh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, the electronic student handbook! Ah, oh, right, I always carry it in my pocket. Then the reason for taking the clothes might be because of the e-handbooks. Why? Why would you even use the e-handbooks here? Will he give us our clothes back? That school uniform is one of a kind in this world. Then I made myself! It's alright, calm down. Okay. So that's that door too, so check that. So let's go back down the hall and <coughs> bless me up this way. Satsuki? Yuki, what do we do? I was already in the same situation inside the school, but now I'm in the same situation on the same school as the ballroom. I originally wanted to go outside the school, but now I'll be satisfied if I go outside this place. <laughs> is this what Monokuma was aiming after? It's okay. Think positively that we can get out soon. We haven't searched this place properly yet. Okay. By the way, Satsuki tried to investigate a corridor hotel, corridor hotel like, but the rest of the rooms are all locked except for the iron gate in the middle. These doors? Looks like there's a lock pad on them. It definitely has a hotel-like atmosphere. It even has a number for each room. In a way, this kind of looks similar, too. Feels like a new student dormitory? Dormitory? A private room? No. No way. Satsuki, the fortune teller investigator. Actually, I want to rest now. Oh, even though it's so late, I'm so sorry I ate all your food. We need to keep looking. Adios! Rooms that feel dormitory room-like. It can't be, right? Well, uh, let's check the rooms. Can we go in? Uh, no, that's, that's locked. That's also 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 locked. There is one for like each student number, I guess. 
Might as well finish looking at them just in case Yuki's is open. Nope. 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 And... Nope. Okay. All of them are locked. Uh, hold up. Actually, let me look at this middle door real quick, though. Okay, what the fuck? No way. What the hell? In the room past the iron door in the deepest part of the ballroom, it was the most shocking one we found in Hope Speak Academy so far. Axes, knives, various firearms, specialized in killing people, to murder, only for murder, all gathered in one place. What in the world are they doing? What? Don't talk to me. Kurokawa, what the hell is all this? Ugh. Kurokawa, what's wrong? This sign? A mark in front of the two overlapping lunar moon characters. It felt unusual, but before noticing that, I felt like I knew this mark somehow. Kurokawa, do you know what this mark is? The Kisaragi Foundation. Oh wait, that's, uh, Meikaru. The Kisaragi Foundation. It's the mark of the Kisaragi Foundation. The two moons. The overlapping characters symbolize February. That means month. This means Kisaragi. Combine the two means the lunar February. The Kisaragi Foundation? What's that? It's not a publicly known company, but to anyone who knows, it's a high-tech industrial company that develops and supports a ride wide range of home appliances, smart devices, even robotics. There was such a company? I had no idea. However, the name Kisaragi, where have I heard that name somewhere before? It's certainly a surprise that the big company in the dark is related to Hope's Peak Academy, but it's not surprising that the country has collapsed like you, exorcist woman. Kurokawa? The Kisaragi Foundation is represented by, represented by the next generation with the family lineage. Now I definitely remembered. The second generation representative of the Kisaragi Foundation was Kisaragi Hanzo. Kisaragi Hanzo? That's the owner of the graduation album I found in the science lab. I said it was the name I heard from somewhere, and it really was. Just a few days ago, I saw that name in the album I accidentally discovered. You obviously know Kisaragi Hanzo, since the third floor when you heard that name, you were surprised by this. And now, in this position, you're seeing the mark of the Kisaragi Foundation. Mikako Kurokawa, I shall ask, do you know something? Say it! What are you hiding? <laughs> oh, yep. The fucking zap again. Kurokawa, what's wrong? Mikaru, I understand you, but let's do this later. I mean, Kurokawa's not in good shape. Even that act is suspicious. Whenever you try to tell us something important, you fall down. Are you trying to evade the answer by pretending to have a headache? If I had to guess right now, I think obviously she's got some relation to them. Uh, but like, for some reason, she has something on her that's basically like, if she dares to speak about certain information, she's gonna get zapped, so she can't. That's my takeaway from this right now. Mikaru! Whatever. I think I finally caught the hint. I'll take it slowly, Miss Exorcist. Kurokawa, are you okay? Can you stand? I'm okay. Thank you. Kurokawa left me alone and began to look at the mark of the Kisaragi Foundation. It seems from what Mikaru said, she seemed to know something. And she looked very lonely. Hmm. Interesting. Gun. Okay. Alright, so we've looked at this part, so now we should go ahead and go down here. Okay, what's... Oh, wait. Did we already look in here? Okay, it come, it's coming out from that side, I see. Then let's go this way. 
big room. Uh, Kinjo, uh, you, you staring into the middle distance in here? Kinjo, you're here. Moida, what about the others? Oh, if she gets zapped if she says the wrong thing, it explains why she may actually be talkative. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I told everyone, the entrance to the ballroom is locked. So I'm investigating the ballroom because it's unknown to us. This is pathetic, even though I knew something clearly that Monokuma was up to something. I got my eyes open and got beaten in an instant. It was unavoidable. Monokuma would have, have, wouldn't have us play around with their plans somehow by using the school rules. By the way, what's wrong with this room? I don't know. I'm investigating it right now. So can you let me be alone? Eh? Honestly, it's a bit of a special treatment to say this to you. Maida goes around with the others, but I can't talk to them anymore. With guys who all of the... With guys who ate all the food we have left, or girls who attempt to murder people. Kinjo, you're still thinking like that. Up until now, I've helped in the trials and tolerated this because it was close to me. The result of such a dull act is, after all, the imprisonment in this ballroom. I've decided. I'm not going to communicate with anyone anymore. I'm going to investigate for myself only. This should include you as well. Why are you suddenly doing this? Leave! At that moment, I remembered what transpired when the fourth floor just opened a few days ago. At the time, Kinjo was shaking in his heart. I couldn't say anything to Kinjo because I was on the verge of going crazy at the time. Yeah, I was able to control my mind because I had Tyra and the others, but Kinjo continued to stay. I don't think I'll be able to continue to talk with Kinjo right now. Let's leave him for a while. All right. Uh, oh, okay. After a rough tour of the ballroom, we gathered in the dining hall and decided to tell what we had investigated, just like a new floor opened. Everyone, how was the investigation? Well, I don't think I've got any satisfactory results. The entrance was locked tightly. All of our clothes were gone. Let's think calmly. Why did Monokuma imprison us in the ballroom? We're in the same state at the Hope Speak Academy, so why do it in another room? Why? Let's think in reverse. Is it because there's a reason why we shouldn't be walking outside? <laughs> Let's spin the chessboard around. Why can't we? Can't you go outside? I don't know yet, but there may be a reason why this should be the case, for Monokuma's circumstances. Don't you think this is an opportunity? If Midas' words are true, if you escape from the ballroom at this point, it would take Monokuma by surprise. Yeah, if Monokuma's currently doing something outside we don't know, then that's a decisive clue towards escaping from the school. Yes, what Monokuma trapped us here is, in other words, an opportunity to escape from the school. Impressive, Maida! Leader, the birth of a new ultimate leader! No, don't be so happy. It's only hypothetical in the end. But in order to, accom order to accomplish this, we have to somehow leave the ballroom. Yeah, how can we break through the Iron Gate with that entrance? Can I shoot a bazooka or something? Speak something that makes sense. No matter how crazy it is, this is Hope's Peak Academy. You think there's such a thing in here? Hey, not only bazookas, but there's also pistols, machine guns, and axes, too. Satsuki-chan, what do you mean? There's a corridor with multiple rooms, and in the back aisle there's a private room. There's a door that leads to a place. There were various weapons in that place. Weapons? That room was as if it were asking you to choose what you wanted to use, like an archive, a weapon display. And there wasn't any sound coming from outside. I think it's soundproofed? No way, that Monokuma's, like, giving us a weapon and telling us to do a battle royale? I don't really know the purpose behind it. Anyway, if we destroy the door like Yurinami says, we'll be executed for vandalism in the end, so it's not possible. Oh, right. Shucks. Let's not enter in that room ever again. It's dangerous. In the end, it's urgent that we have, are still yet to find a clue to get out of the ballroom. There was a suspicious room, but the room had nothing in it. God, I feel the generational gap every single time uh, when the, the phrase Battle Royale comes up and people say Fortnite, because I immediately just think of Battle Royale, the novel, uh, or the movie that it's that's based on it. 
<laughs> uh, I unfortunately read that book in sixth grade. If you've ever read that book, you should know that that is not a thing that I should have done. It uh, actually gave me nightmares. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> there was a suspicious room, but the room had nothing in it. Well, thanks to this, our sense of purpose has become clear, right? <laughs> what were you thinking? Guys, I didn't ha I didn't make good decisions when I was young. <laughs> I uh, I read Higurashi when I was in elementary school. <laughs> uh, haven't read it or watched the movie, but how different is it? The movie is like a pretty decent adaptation, but the book is really long. So it just ha it has to skim like a lot of stuff. And the book has a lot of uh, really fucked up content in it that doesn't make it into the movie either. Yes, yes, I read Higurashi in elementary school. <laughs> uh, that was, that was, that was the times back then. When you were an anime fan, uh, before anime really hit the mainstream in the West and before streaming platforms became popular, uh, if you were a fan of anime, you just watched whatever you could get your hands on. <laughs> Dare I ask what Higurashi is? Oh, tiny. Uh, Higurashi is the uh, first series that was written by the author of Umineko. Um, it is also sort of a supernatural murder mystery thing taking place in the 80s in a rural village. Uh, it's really good. There are a lot of parts about it that have aged poorly, uh, but I still think it, it's very dear and near to my heart. It's one of my favorite series of all time, uh, and I would highly recommend it. But uh, I would not recommend the anime. Um, the anime is like okay, but it I feel like it doesn't really capture the tone very well of the original VN, unfortunately. <clears throat> anyway, back on track. Well, thanks to this, our sense of purpose has become clear, right? Somehow we gotta leave the ballroom and take Monokuma's expectations by surprise. Yes, it's better than wandering outside without any hope like a few days ago. I, I actually uh, dislike the jokes about the chair scene, to be completely honest. I'm not gonna like get into the details because I don't want to spoil it or anything. But uh, as many like memes have been made about it over the years, I actually think it's a really sad scene because uh, it shows that per it shows how that particular character that is doing that action at that time has really reached like a breaking point uh, where they would do something like that that they would otherwise never do. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's actually a very sad scene to me. So I I kind of dislike the memes. Uh, aged badly in a bigot way or unsinkable ship kind of aged badly? Uh, no, it's not bigoted. Uh, Higurashi is actually like rather based. Uh, there are a lot of things in Higurashi that are like actually super based. Um, and Ryukishi in general is just like a, an author that handles subjects about like uh, mental health and LGBT stuff too, like extremely well. Uh, it's just that it has a lot of like unfortunate anime-esque humor, like a lot of like gross perv humor basically um which i mean it was a dojin that was released in like literally or it was a dojin software that was released in like the early 2000s so that's kind of understandable given the time that it came out but it does make rereading it in the modern day a little bit difficult sometimes but yeah uh mooney levy or livey higurashi was super progressive for the time contra culture and counterculture level uh that is Absolutely true. Uh, and in fact, some of the more based uh, political statements in Higurashi actually got kind of censored in the console releases in Japan. It was too based. Uh, so that was interesting. <clears throat> However, this is just a story of possibilities in the end. The reason Monokuma trapped us in here is unknown. And even if I'm right, it won't be easy at all to find clues. But we still believe. If there's a small number of a chance, 
that near zero possibility is what will create our hope. In fact, there were more bad news. The idea about the Kisaragi Foundation, the Kurikawa was being a suspect, and what Kinjo said, in the school office, but I couldn't say them on purpose. It will only create confusion. Uh, yeah, Tiny, if uh, you want more details about like the, the Steam releases and stuff and like um, like all, all that kind of stuff, because I know that there are like a lot of people that would prefer you either play with like the original sprites or mods or whatever the whatever the hell like uh i can i can tell you all about that later if you want if you're curious um because i am a, a way too hyper fixated on this series so i know all this stuff for some reason i shut my voice for a few days but it's different this time at that time i hid the facts to escape from reality but this time it's all about hiding in order to move forward together i'll tell them someday when the time comes for now, let's just think about escaping with everyone. I was thinking naively. Our opponent is- What is going on with him right now? It's it's like, there's like this weird, like, every time he gets too optimistic, there's like this weird Jekyll and Hyde switch that like clicks in the back of his head that's like, actually, you're depressed now. <laughs> huh. Our opponent is Monokuma. It made it certain that it would not be easy. <laughs> Why I locked you guys? Well, Mitokun's hypothesis is very interesting, but can you really get out of the ballroom? Ah, yes, this is the end of your free time. There will be an important announcement. So for now, please come to the dance hall. Monokuma. Finally appeared, you rotten bastard. A big announcement. What is it? I'm not sure. I'm nervous, but we can't say no. Let's go. Oh boy. I feel like this is not going to be good. What's the catch? We gather that the dance hall is directed by Monokuma. Immediately after, Monokuma handed eight keys for us. On the key I received, the name tag Room 1 was hung in the key ring. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everyone got it right? Don't ever lose it, because that key is to your lodgings, where you will spend your days here. Lodgings? I'll explain things step by step, since you guys are so curious about things. The reason I called you to the ballroom, and the reason the door was suddenly locked, and the reason as to what I'm going to do now is because it feels a little bit early, but I wanted to announce the motive, of course. Uh-huh. I'm planning on sharing Higurashi with a few friends of mine to let them in on the absolutely fantastic experience that is the tale of Hinamizawa. Absolutely. Do it. I'm actually, um, I've been reading it with my, uh, my roommates, my, my people that I live with, and I'm kind of pondering possibly doing a podcast about it, like a, like a book club kind of podcast. It's a, it's a very tentative idea, but, um, I've been thinking about it lately. Might be fun. <clears throat> Anywho. Not another motive! The motive this time is... It's another video? Nah, there's nothing like that. The motive this time is that you guys stepped into this very ballroom itself. What? What? What does that mean? There's only one thing I'll tell you guys from now on. <laughs> yeah, horse fry podcast, you say. Yes, yes. Uh, for, for those of you who don't realize what that's about, uh, horse fry is also on a podcast uh, called the uh, When We Cry podcast. That's That's the one, right? That's the name of it? Hold on, let me let me check my servers real quick. Yes, okay, it is when we cry. I I knew that that was right. I just didn't want to fuck it up. Anyway, um, but yeah, and it has also had tons of podcast episodes about both Higurashi and Dumineko, and I've been on several of them. I need to probably do it again sometime. It's just, I've just just been so busy. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but it's it's always fun. So <clears throat> there's only one thing I'll tell you guys from now on. This ballroom is locked, and it's impossible to leave or get out. That's why the only way is that you have to kill someone. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> what are you saying? I don't get it. I don't understand this. Oh, was there too much explanation there? Simply put, you guys can't leave the ballroom until a murder happens. That's what I mean. What in the blimey? 
Are you telling us we have to murder in order to get out of here? That's right, it's the same outcome as ever. Of course, if you kill and pass the class trial safely, you can leave the ballroom and the school in one go. I mean, Lainey, sometimes I talk to the audience about stuff. But, you know, we're all here having a, a social fun time. It's, I, I feel like I can feel free to talk to you guys about stuff sometimes, I would hope, at least. Uh, been reading for several hours now. <laughs> We're probably gonna stop pretty soon, actually. Safely, you, yeah, okay. Can leave the ballroom one go. This is just nonsense. Don't worry too much. This time I even prepared an arsenal for a more adequate, for a more adequate murder plan. So go ahead and start killing. Oh, but I won't admit, I won't admit suicide. It is absolutely forbidden to kill yourself. Keep in mind that I'll just treat that act like a dog's death. God, dude. We'd even listen to what you have to say. Even if you block us, we can still escape? Eh? Can you? Sorry, but it's impossible. Currently, there's only one entrance to the ba ballroom hall. It's only the main entrance to the dance hall. On top of that, the door is made of the same material as the front door of Hope's Peak, Hope's Peak Academy, with the strength to withstand even a nuclear bomb. There's only one way to open the door to the ballroom. It only registers the e-student handbook. Oh, so that's why you took the handbook. The handbook? What is it? That means you can go out at any time, right? And the e-handbooks were always in our pockets. Ah, the clothes! Clothes? Ah, if your clothes get dirty or ripped, in that case, I bought them to your private rooms. On the first floor. Aren't I kind? From the beginning, this was the purpose. To put us in the ballroom. To induce murder. No, that's a little strange. Monokuma, surely you remember writing a memorandum in accordance with the rules, and they promised that they wouldn't do anything during the party? So were you going to say all of those were just empty words now? Huh? I haven't done anything that violates the memorandum, did I? What are you talking about? You've done a lot of things here. No one said during the party. I recall saying until you guys got lively again. You don't mean. That's what it means. After the dance and eating delicious food, you guys went back to your usual selves. Because you rejuvenated, the memorandum wasn't violated. Don't be ridiculous. Are you trying to make a joke or something? Oh, but it's true. It's logically perfect. If you don't feel different, try and refute it. You... No, hold it. I've never been happy at a party, and I've never laughed or stayed to chat. As you said, I wasn't necessarily upset, but this is an obvious violation. And that's because I didn't specifically identify Kinjo. I said you guys as an unspecified majority. Regardless of Kinjo-kun's personal intention, because more than half of you were happy. I shouldn't have believed in Monica more. We were so comfortable. Well, they keep hitting us several times already. Calm down. This stage is the same as in Hope's Peak. If you kill, you get out. Is no different than before. Just keep your mind controlled and let's devote ourselves to the investigation. Is that right? Are you sure? Well, it's definitely the same. Uh, yeah, Air Kyer, out of curiosity, was Zoomy Neko. Uh, I've been streaming it, and I'm streaming it again tomorrow as well, so... There you go. Just look back at my lives. But until now, there was enough space and plenty of food. Well, I've still prepared as much food as I could, based on how many of you were left. But guess who the who were the ones who ate a lot? It's fine. There's no problem. Haru, Satsuki, the food's still here. In the refrigerator. If you eat sparingly, we still have a few more days left to eat. Uh, really? Monokuma, we won't give up. There is food, and there's a place to sleep. The past, rather, as we are in a corner, we'll investigate even more thoroughly, and we'll definitely get out of here without any of our friends dying. We will never give up hope. We won't be eaten by despair. Yuki. Maida-kun. Hmm, it's surprising to hear that kind of thing coming from Maida-kun. What's that? Nothing. Well, that's what everyone's aware now. That's what everyone is... Yeah, everyone's aware now. Until someone dies, the party will continue. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Think of the ballroom as a separate space from this school. You guys don't even have an e-handbook, so I, I... So just think you're not a student. In other words, you don't need the rules. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. What do you mean? 
What else? It's a lawless zone, meaning you can beat up and fight between yourselves, imprison people, and there's no nighttime. Oh, but rule five still counts. No hitting me or damaging property. Also, the broadcast that announces night and mornings will also change. In this situation, can you guys ever really say that you'll be the same as ever? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is... Oh, man. This sucks. This sucks. <laughs> a lawless zone, he said? Ignore that. As Midas says, we have to investigate hard and get out. Wait, Kinjo, Mikaru! Monokuma said this situation itself is the motive. I understand that you want to act separately, but now this is a crisis. Wouldn't it be better to cooperate with each other? Because it's a crisis, I can't stay with any of you anymore. What? <laughs> Tiny Leaf, I, I checked out for five seconds what happened. Monokuma basically said that while they're trapped in the ballroom, none of the rules, aside from damaging property or Monokuma himself, like, count. So, like, you still can't hurt the headmaster, you still can't destroy walls or floors or whatever, but literally everything else is allowed. Uh, and yeah, that's bad. That's really bad. In this place, without school rules, without order, the only way to escape is murder. The same conditions apply. However, because of the isolation factor, the urgency increases even more than before. You said that there was more food left, so it might last for a few days. However, there will clearly be a killer among us once the food depletes. What? Why are you saying that so casually? I agree with Psycho Cop here, although I don't like it. I wonder who you got, when you guys will face reality already. Kinjo, Mikado. Fine, that's it. We don't even want to be with you guys like that. By the way, Kinjo-kun, didn't he look strange? Marcy, I don't know if you saw when I asked a bit ago, but have you ever heard of a series called Summertime Rendering? I've heard of Summertime Rendering, I just have not looked into it. I've heard a couple of things about it, and I've been told by several friends that I would probably like it, so uh, I will have to check it out sometime, but I just haven't gotten around to it. You were strange? How? Kind of. I guess he was more than upset. He looked troubled about something. A guy like that? No way. He was the same as usual, right? Is that so? Maida, I understand how you feel, but I think it'd be better to give up on Kinjo and Mekaru now. They're too stubborn. Can't afford to worry about him. Yeah, in short, if we can escape together, we can get along again, right? Kinjo wouldn't treat us as criminals if that happens. It's not too late for that. But... This is an announcement. It is now 10 p.m. Nighttime. But you don't need to sleep or stay in your rooms. Now then, have a good night. Oh, this is such a pressure cooker. This is such a, like, terrible, terrible uh, situation to isolate them in. This is going to drive people nuts really quickly. Oh, man. Oh, uh, I'm... Ugh. I'm scared. I'm scared about how this is going to go. It's 10 p.m.? It's already that time? For now, we should go to sleep. Everyone's tired today. If we investigate tomorrow, I'm sure we'll discover something. Everyone has their private room key from Monokuma, right? I'll be going to bed. Be careful not to lose your key. He said that it's not nighttime anymore, but let's keep protecting the group we used to have. When you sleep at night, be sure to lock the door and not open, okay? Roger that. This is the private room? Isn't it way too small? Rather than a private room, it's just a room for sleeping. Surely staying in a place like this doesn't seem too good for your mental health either. I still felt a lot of anxiety, but I didn't hesitate as much as I used to. Hope is to be made. With everyone around me, I believe it's possible. Well, let's go to bed for today. I can do my best investigating again tomorrow. All right. Well. Hmm. Yeah, I still haven't eaten dinner yet, and it's really late. <laughs> um, and considering that uh, apparently this uh, this part is kind of long, I think perhaps 
it would be a good time to stop for now. Maybe. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave off uh, here then. I think this is a pretty good cliffhanger. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanna say before we go. Actually, does the, the, uh, yeah, the handbook is not in here, I don't think. Yeah, it's not. That's interesting. Okay, well, uh, anyway, I was just, uh, yeah. Uh, this is a really interesting uh, chapter premise. I'm really um, interested to see what's going on here. I'm really interested to see how Kinjo is changing because he's really having like a crisis of faith at the moment and like wavering back and forth. And I do actually think like that he is probably going to undergo some character growth in the near future, uh, whether for good or for bad. Uh, I would be really interested to see either way. Um, and also obviously the, the stuff with like the, the memories being erased is coming back up. If this is as much of a mirror to DR1 as it has been so far, I would, I would imagine that that's going to continue being a thing. Cthulhu, the Canadian $2. Take care of yourself. I'm trying. I'm trying. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, obviously whenever we get to uh, the next stream of this, I would imagine that we're probably going to be able to cover more ground just because obviously we needed to cover the free time events in this one. Uh, so that always ends up taking a little bit of time up whenever we have to do those. But, uh, well, and even more so because we had to go through three of them as opposed to the usual two. Uh, but I'm excited to see where this goes. And uh, I will be scheduling another stream for this probably soon-ish. But uh, remember, everybody that's here now, uh, I am also having another stream tomorrow. I'm going to be starting episode two of Umineko. So look forward to that if you've been watching those streams. Oh, there's still free time events in the ballroom part. That's cool. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess that's it. I don't really have anything else that I feel like saying at the moment because the chapter isn't over yet. Uh, I'll probably give more extended thoughts later whenever we get through with it. Also, Kitty with the two pounds, thank you so much. Anywho. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys probably maybe tomorrow if you guys uh, attend that stream. And otherwise, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.